Hello and welcome to week two of Style Esports season 16. The best of three hitting your monitors tonight will be a battle between William and Mary and Mythic Creation. First time on the rift this season for these teams, as both sides are hoping to start off this season of style on the right foot. Swords shall be shaken and fates shall be tested as our competitors call upon a higher power to help earn them a higher rank. My name is Crewman44. I am joined once again tonight by the totally awesome TDS for tonight's religious rivalry. Are you a man of faith, TDS? I am, but I don't put my faith in games because typically people just fail me. So I'd rather not go that deep. <laughs> I see. I see. Well, uh, thankfully for you, all you have to do is sit here on the caster desk with me. So uh, hopefully, you know, that won't require too much of you. Um, but I do believe that our teams are going to be ready to get into this draft very, very soon. Uh, we are still on the same patch that we were on last week, of course. A couple of things that I think we did learn. Kaisa. Picker ban, uh, Aatrox, pretty strong, and Rel, still pretty strong as well, I think, despite those nerfs. Anything else you're looking out for tonight, TDS? Overall, I feel like those are the main things that I would call out as well. Maybe the change in some potential matchups that we see up there in the top lane, because I feel like we've seen less and less priority over the champions like the Kaysante, like the Jax. Mm -hmm. I think Rumble has risen up in priority. And also tanks have come back quite a bit up during the top lane the jungle was the jungler meta was also kind of already stable stabilizing into into tank junglers but now top lane as well is kind of coming back to that spot is slowly but surely now we'll see what priorities our teams will have tonight moving very Ooh. quickly through this first ban phase tds echo and zigs already denied by wnm We've got Misfortune and Zareth. A couple of uh, longer range carries banned away by Mythic Creation. Yeah, actually, the Zareth one is something I'm, I'm really surprised to see, but I like that we're seeing the ban because I, I've had the chance to see it and play a bit of the newer, well, not newer, but the buffed Zareth to uh, quote unquote. And it actually mm -hmm. feels quite nice to play the ultimate value as well early on having those four ultimates can really impact a lot of how the lane can go and how the map can go so really like the bank coming through and with the two remaining bands coming through kaisa is left open so yeah indeed indeed tds you know i would have liked the zarath ban as well if a kaisa ban was also included on that list unfortunately it seems that mythic creation have foregone that's that, that uh, particular ban and so the Kaisa will be locked away on B1 here, giving William and Mary a very nice start to this first draft. Could be really, really good. It does give the opportunity for Mythic Creation to get the Rel on their side. And having huge amounts of CC to try and lock down the Kaisa can be one of the easiest ways to stop her from being a huge pain in the ass, really. But <laughs> overall, the Kaisa should find a lot of value. And I think the Saya here, at the very least, will have the ultimate value to deny any sort of either engage potential from the enemy team. Or at the very least, if she's at risk of dying, the poke can be soft. But Graves instead of the rail. So could be a really mm. good opportunity to grab that rail for William and Mary. Or you could also deny the Rakan, right? Who is also still open. I'm sure that's something that Mythic Creation could lean towards if uh, if he does make it through to that R3 pick. The Graves certainly an interesting selection. Interesting that he would be prioritized so highly in this draft uh i'm not seeing uh i mean there's a little bit of graves in the match history for uh qcl over here the jungler for mythic but um yeah it's a little bit surprising they would put so much priority on that and the rakan is what's going to be denied so the lovers duo will be separated for this first game and the rel honestly could get locked in here also if they want to put it in the jungle could be for the jungle but I'm not sure if we're going to see the rail in the jungle this game. I, I feel much more confident seeing it just in the support position because you get more value and then you can pick the jungler to try and fight it out with the Graves or try and get early things going before these Graves spikes. At the end, they go for the picture, which does give you consistent mid laner, but that already is stacking to be quite a bit of magical damage unless the Kai'Sa goes for a much more AD oriented build. And in the meanwhile, yes, you did take away the Rakan for the lower duel, but I feel like the Saya with any sort of engaged support can find value. As long as, as she has someone that will go in and she can press R to be safe, it doesn't really matter who she's paired up with, really. 
All right. Yeah. I mean, Kaisa Zaya is a meta from years past that has yep. sort of made its way back to us here in uh, season 13. But uh, the Syndra is going to be the last option to get locked in in the first round of picks for Mythic Creation into the second ban phase now, as we are mostly in parity. But William and Mary do have the option of banning away some supports while Mythic Creation can target that jungle pool. So the Jarvan and the Kindred going to get removed. Two fairly meta junglers at the moment. And then uh, the Thresh going to get denied. Doesn't exactly match the engage that you were looking for, where the Leona certainly does. But that's the thing. It's engaged aboard once again. And the Rel not going to to appear for this matchup potentially here with the Leona and the Rakan already selected. I would doubt that we're going to get the Rel unless it is going to be the Rel jungle. But it would be kind of surprising to see it coming through. But that's kind of the point that I was making with the Leo, with the Rel as well over on the side of Mythic Creation. You know, or with the Rakan. You don't need the Rakan really. You just need another engaged support that can fit the build to a certain degree. And then Saya can press R. And that's it. She's safe by herself. So if that's the, mm -hmm. the reasoning behind it, I'm not sure if that's the best. But you did take away the Lover's Duel interaction. And then we do have the Viego. So yeah, no Rel game, it seems. It seems that is the case, yes. Uh, Rel, you know, of course, slightly nerfed. Still pretty strong, we think, but not necessarily pick or ban worthy. Not going to be making our way out of the rift this game. Is the Olaf being considered? But it will be the Poppy instead for Yamthony in the top lane. So pretty interesting comp here for William and Mary. I, I feel like it does a few different things, but I don't know if it necessarily does one thing the best, if you know what I mean, TBS. It's, well, it, it feels like it's the jack of all trades master of none really right the the one that you can really use for a lot of things but really doesn't excel in one particularly that being said i do like the the fact that with the puppy you at the very least you have the cancel for the leon engage so you can kind of stop it from going forward but when you look at mythic creations comp really there's only one champion that goes really really deep everyone else kind of just plays on the edge until they deal enough damage to kill you, or you misstep and they can blow you up. That's kind of the, the way that Mythic Creation wants to play this. In the main wall, I think Will and Mary does have a bit more of a consistent comp. You have the Rakan and the Poppy that can go in, but don't necessarily need to. Victor and Kaisa as well can go in, but don't necessarily need to. Actually, Victor doesn't really go in, but does have the potential to try and cover with the, in the safe distance with his laser beam. And then the Viego to try and get into the fights and get the reset. So I would argue Will and Mary a bit more consistent of a comp but mythic creation does have tools to try and play it out yeah i feel like there's there's really one theme that uh pulls together this composition for mythic creation especially with yeah. that rumble getting locked in on r5 and that theme is damage everybody on this team does a lot of damage uh varying different points in the game uh you know rumble spiking a little bit earlier on uh syndra you know more towards the mid game and then graves and Saya really when they get to those you know, three item marks, they really start to dish it out. Um, yeah, so I, I do feel like if they get ahead with this composition for Mythic Creation, there really are not going to be very many avenues available for William and Mary to try and come back because I feel like it, you know, for all these champions on the side of Mythic Creation, they can be very, very oppressive when they reach those damage thresholds when they're playing from ahead. Uh, can be very, very difficult to play against them. But I do feel like if they fall behind, they won't have very many tools themselves. You know, they don't really have much engage besides the Leona, uh, and they don't really have, the, like, too much frontline besides the Leona either. So uh, the engage tools from William, William and Mary, specifically that Rakan, uh, could be really, really threatening if we do find that shoe on the other foot. And the fact that you do have the Poppy to work as a frontliner and try and deny some of that engage potential from the Leona as well, or at the very least soak up a lot of the damage from Mythic Creation can be quite important when looking at potential later team fights. That's why I kind of said with Mythic Creation, it's more so on they either play on the edge and they are able to kill you through just a really good positioning and really nice amount of damage uh, stacking up, or you misstep and they are able, able to blow you out of your uh, of the game because of their amount of damage that some of their champions have like the Syndra, the Graves, and the Rumble. So you really have to think about how you position as William and Mary really effectively. But at the same time, as long as you don't make any egregious mistake, your comp is so straightforward that it's kind of difficult to really mess it up. I'm more curious about the fact of what the Kai'Sa will build, if it's going to be Poe Kai'Sa or AD Kai'Sa, 
but even then i do think that as long as they just don't over commit to certain things but instead just play it out as normally as possible their composition should be able to outlast or at the very least out team fight the side of mythic creation i do kind of feel that way as well yes you know, and just uh the Zaya pick in particular i just feel like is so oppressive right now you know we have some nerfs on the horizon so uh guys don't worry the Z or kaisa will not be b1 pick every game for too much longer uh but for now this champion is just so so difficult to play against uh just when she gets those two items it pretty much just uh it gets to be pretty ridiculous, as I'm sure anybody who's played League recently will be aware or watched League recently or anything. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm kind of liking it for William and Mary. You know, they do kind of have that slight issue that we were mentioning before, where they didn't really fully index into one strategy with this composition. So, you know, things could get a little bit awkward if they're not playing together super well, if they're not all completely on the same page about what their objective is at any point. Um, but I do think that they, they might have a little bit of an edge. So what are your thoughts on these drafts, TDS, in terms of uh, anybody coming out ahead in Champion Select? I like William and Marys more. Uh, I'll just yeah. come out and straight up and say it. I think yeah, Paris yeah. is more consistent. Their their theme is much more unified in my eyes. And as long as they don't mess up, there it shouldn't be that difficult to try and pull through. That being said, I will give the benefit of the doubt to Mythic Creation. If they get a lead or if they find ways to push aggressively, I can see their come triumphing, especially because it's a come that does give you a bit of the onus more so than to the enemy team. And so more times than less, that tends to work for a lot of teams. But I, I do like William and Mary's more. Well, there's going to be some angles there for Mythic Creation. Absolutely. We'll see which side uh, has the stronger faith here for game number one. Don't go anywhere, guys. We're going to be commencing with Style Season 16 Week 2 right after this.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, and everybody else, all my lovely League of Legends fans out there, welcome to the Rift for our first game of the night. Mythic Creation on the red side, William and Mary on the blue. A little bit of an aggressive move here here early on uh, from Mythic, but not actually going to be getting, uh, well, I guess it does get that one ward down in the blue buff pit. Going to give them a bit of a an advantage in terms of the position of the information, knowing if Wokian is going to start over on the blue side, which seems to be the case, but I don't think it's going to be that big of a difference. I like, at the very least, the aggressiveness in the level one. Like, always look for these level ones because they can really be fun to see as an spectator, obviously, not as the yeah. side that is receiving them. You know, uh, you don't necessarily always want to go for the level one, but just uh, trying to get a little bit of information, I feel like, is certainly a very manageable thing that can be done and uh, was done by mythic creation so they will know that diego is starting on his blue buff graves can be starting on his own respective top side buff everybody path it down towards that bot lane tds they want to try and give an advantage to their ad carries and i i respect that i think we're currently or still in a meta where you want to have your bot laners be as strong as possible and your top laners in an island without interrupting or bothering anyone. So really, it just makes sense with the current meta state. It does, it does. Although the Rumble pick is a little bit of an exception to the rule, is he not? Where he does like to play things pretty aggressively, like to try and find nice big leads for himself in that top lane. We'll see if Triops is going to be able to make that happen in isolation. Certainly winning out against the Poppy so far. And uh, Viego, a little bit faster on the clear. We also see Merlin... Being able to move down and drop that ward in the pixel brush as, uh, yeah, Yamthony is getting quite low up here. Rumble damage, no joke, even early on. At all, really can make a difference. And like you're pointing out, probably one of the places you would like to look out for just because of how powerful that rumble is. But I feel like it's more so for the side of the poppy, not not so much for the for the rumble side because he can just survive that. Oh, wait a minute. Zenith Blade for Cliff nice. going in down here. Going to take a lot of punishment, though, for that move. Leona will survive, but just barely. Only a couple autos away from dead there. We'll be able to hold yeah, on to the flash, though. Really slight difference between live and death there for the Leona. But still, it was them that started the play. Leona went in, and then the Rakan really didn't take that much damage. Was able to then turn around the play and force the Leona to be super low. That being said, it ends up being an advantage in, in terms of summoners for the Leona and the Saya because it was Ignite for nothing. That's true, and the potions do get Pete Cliff back up to about 50% HP, so not the worst for wear that he could otherwise be. This wave is slowly pushing in towards Mythic, and Graves is in the area, so QCL City. Could look for a move over here. There is no ward in that bush for Will and Will and M. And Will Gray decide to make his move. Diego not down here at all. It passed oh, up towards no. the top side of the map. Zenith Blade not going to connect though. The wave's still a little bit awkward for the Kaisa and the Rakan, but looks like QCL just oh he cancels the recall. He's thinking about it. Okay, Zenith Blade is back. Could be a good opportunity for them to look for it, but I feel like the Kaisa and the Rakan know of it. They are prepared of it. Yeah, they're clear. They're playing quite respectfully uh, in that lane, just really not giving the angle to the Graves. You know, the Leona is the only way to really engage that fight. And the fact that it wasn't able to find the Zenith Blade meant that there was really nothing there for City. Yeah, gotta say, really like how both Kaiza and the Rakan play that out. They respected the potential of a gank coming through. They knew that their Viego was hovering over in topside. And even though they were losing on a couple of minions, they still have the advantage, so it didn't matter that much. But they were a bit behind on the minions. So it, it did impact that, but I like the respect that they provided. Ooh. Top lane, though. Yeah, getting pretty low. Uh, City did just Ooh. get the bad news that he got double scuttled. Is he going to be able to win out in this fight, though? Uh, able to push the Viego away. Victor roaming over to reinforce... Both top laners, yeah, we saw that scrap up there. They both did get pretty low, but look at all this priority for Mythic Creation. Able to push mid-jungle out of this top side entirely. Yeah, the main issue right now for the side of, uh, of, of the blue side, it's that their top side is losing so heavily. Look at the, the way that the top side is going. Oh, even <laughs> equalizer just to push the wave. They are getting pushed. They don't have control. They cannot 
allow their Viego to roam freely. And in comparison, the Graves gets complete priority, is able to push waves and engage down here. Oh, yeah, big engage, big engage. Zai is flashing away from the grand entrance. It's Chase who's going down pretty low. The Shield of Daybreak will get the cleanse. Geekliff now forced to walk backwards. Kaisa Passive is going to proc, but the Leona will survive on about 150 HP. It's cleanse for flash on the side on the side. So overall, I feel like you take that if you're on the William Mary side. And here comes the Viego. I'm not sure if they know the Viego. Oh, oh Heathcliff's gonna get taken down here. The bone plating keeps him alive. Woken uh, Wokian gonna continue to look for this play. Has flash and flash yeah. for the Q, and there's gonna be the first blood over to the William and Mary jungler. He's gonna be able to take the stolen Leona body. Now he doesn't have the Heartbreaker, of course, not level six yet, which means it will just be the one kill. Over to Wham to start things off. It tells us how that happens because the Viego, with any, if he gets the the Leona there and then he's able to go back to his abilities, probably kills the Saya really, really easily. But because he's stuck on the Leona, cannot <laughs> get the extra damage for the kill, and at the end, it does provide the opportunity for Frozen to escape. That being said, it's still a one for nothing. They get the kills, they get the blade as well in the mid lane. So the overall value for the set of William and Mary is just simply much, much higher. Yeah, definitely. I, I do feel Ooh. like, okay, as Merlin's going to have to flash away from this Graves in the mid lane. It didn't have the collateral damage yet, but Syndra did have the unleashed power, and Merlin did not want to play around with that possibility. Now has no oh, flash, though, yeah. and the scatter will connect. Another one lands from Paradox, and in comes Graves flashing in for the play. It's going to be the unleashed power that finishes things off as the side of Mythic Creation tie things up one-to-one. Really, really good setup coming into the mid lane with the Leona just hex flashing over the wall. And before that, Paradox connecting on that scatter of the week. Really good kill they are getting. They find they find some value back after what happened bot side. And also they are feeding one of their important champions, the Sidra. Okay, this is Heathcliff going into the lane right as Cheese was trying to go aggressive. Ooh. A lot of damage coming through from the Blade Caller already, but Zaya also chunked down pretty low as the Ignite has already been utilized by Mage of None. Wave is pushing in towards Zaya and Leona. They will just collect that for now. These teams really not holding back. Lots of scraps. Yeah, they like to fight, and I respect that. I, I like to see the fact that they are going to uh, uh, punch for punch, trying to get as much damage on the other as possible. The bot lane fight just now showcasing that both sides wouldn't be scared about anything, and now a dragon fight potentially. Mm. Well, King gonna have to call the bot lane over, but luckily Mage oh. and Cheese did have priority. Quickness popped, looking for the charm, gonna find it onto the still level five Graves. QCL City running rapidly out of health. Leona over the wall, though. It's gonna be the killer instinct in from Kaisa. Oh, Cheese does manage to get that kill going down very, very low, though. Is the Kaisa able to survive? Ooh. Not quite. As one more feather comes through, it's actually the Ignite that gets out that last tick of damage. Heatcliff gonna be able to pick up the kill. Frozen will not survive as the roam over from the Victor as well. Yeah, they do have Paradox here trying to protect the blue buff just in case. And if Woken stays too long, yeah, they may get engaged on and probably die. So they probably should give it up at the very least for now. It's not that worth it. It's just a blue buff. They already got the kills and that's what matters. Absolutely got the dragon as well. So William yep. and Mary feeling pretty good about that whole sequence. They are up just about a thousand goals. Not the largest lead we've ever seen, but uh, that is something that is noteworthy, especially against a composition like this, right? That doesn't have many tools to play with if it falls behind. Trying to make that happen early on certainly uh, could work out well for Wham. This Poppy lane is so sad to watch. Yeah. <laughs> Every time we pan up there, Poppy is below 50% health. But at the same time, Yanthony has been doing a pretty solid job of hanging on, right? I mean, is down significantly in CS, but hasn't given over any kills and has managed to stay even in experience. So uh, pretty pretty well played, I, I want to say, all things considered for the uh, William & Mary top laner. And now the Herald also getting taken tap, taking advantage of the fact that the top lane had to escape because he was about to die. So now collecting that Ray Herald, going to be an important cooldown, an important objective to try and get here particularly because we talked about this they want to try and snowball as much as possible so getting that huge amount of hold could really turn around Ooh. oh woken triumph's gonna look for this gonna get stunned Ooh. into the wall though but city is coming over will make sure that his top laner is all right the herald was secured there by the grave so like you're just saying that is big news for mc oh the unleashed power it is available he's gonna go for it merlin able to stay alive right. though with the potion ticking 
Victor is okay for now, but look at this. It's Graves on the flank. The oh. damage, it's collateral, but it's not quite enough. So the Victor will survive. Not Graves moving forward very aggressively here, but I don't know if he has the support that he needs. QCL City is looking to be QCL... Uh, Deddy, I'm not sure what I was going for there. But either way, it's not going to work out for the Graves. And that's going to be Wham picking up another one. Yep, it's actually gaining another potential kill there with the fact that they are now on the lead. Really, really, really good for the side of William and Mary. Trying to keep themselves as high up as possible and not give the opportunity for Triops advantage to matter that much. Because Triops is hurting quite a lot. Oh, oh, the killer is sitting under the tower. There's Noofy Cheese. Picks up his second of the game. There's the power of the Kaisa for you. It's lane it priority is all game. Finds the kill under the turret. Look at that CS lead in the bot lane as well, TDS. Yeah, I was going to make the joke. It is called Killer Instinct for a reason. So it yeah. works out massively at the end, by the way. And yeah, the CS difference in bot lane kind of mirroring what's happening topside. Obviously, Tribe is a bit better. But the difference is the kills. They have the kills plus the play that they were able to collect early on as well. So that difference not only equaling out, but maybe even putting them farther ahead and allowing them to be even better. And also the fact that it's on a Kai'Sa, right? That's yeah. that's going to be pretty significant as well. Uh, about a 1,600 gold lead individually right now for Cheese in that ADC position. That's pretty huge. You think it gets the, the static sheep already completed, so even better. Oh, Ooh, Merlin gets Push away flash. from that scatter. It's going to be able to get a little damage out here onto the Leona, but that Herald will charge into the Tier 1. Going to get that one down. A couple of plates knocked off for Mythic Creation. Poppy is just struggling to survive up here. Yamthun is a true warrior. He's just taking <laughs> everything that's going to him, and he's just like, okay, I'm back to lane. I'm back to base, but I'll be back, and I'm going to take that same suffering, but I'll be back again. He's got the teleport. He's going to be right back up there to defend once again. Weak side William for William and Mary. Never a better use of that particular term, I think. Yeah, I think fits perfectly with the situation for, for Yamthun there. Also... Important though, now that the Poppy has used the teleport and we're post 10 minutes, Triops does have the teleport. So if there's a fight down here that the Poppy is not even close by to joining, could be a numbers advantage for the side of, of for the red side. And if they are able to collect a really yeah. good amount of gold out of that, could really turn around the game. And look at this, uh, Triops actually opting to hold on to the TP has just decided to hoof it down here into the bottom side of the map. And now oh. Cheese and Mage of None got to be a little bit careful as the whole squad for MC is in the area. Yanthony is going to take the opportunity to try and get himself a little bit of much-needed income up there in that top lane. But this dragon will go over. The Rumble going to be able to teleport back up there now to catch that next wave that is coming in. And a good move, Ooh. I want to say, as the Quickness is going to come out in the bottom side. Zaya knocked into the air, has the Feather Storm, but no Flash. Going to be able to go up into the air and get the Disengage. Diego, though, now looking. Zaya no ult. Can't not land. The Spectral Maw does not <laughs> matter as he has the damage with the completed Kraken Slayer to get the kill, but he does get traded back as QCL City was there to punish. One for one in the bottom side river. A bit disrespectful from the from the Diego to not use ultimate there. It's fine if you think you can kill her, but you have to use ultimate because it does give you the potential to reset immediately. With that, he cannot reset immediately, and that means that he's still hitable and killable just like what it happened there with the graves like the attempt though like the potential kill that they were looking for and also because the saya didn't have flash was a good idea to try and kill her before she got that back or before she was able to even escape with no ultimate and then the play with the teleport from triops i'm honestly not a huge fan just because i do think that you could have done almost all that without sending the rumble super early on and that just gave an opportunity for the anthony to try and come back at the very least a bit yeah, definitely. Poppy did, uh, I'm sure, really appreciate that little bit of time that was afforded to not get burned alive uh, for a little while. Still, this Kaiser is way too strong, so it's not like it matters that much as of now, <laughs> at the very least for William and Mary. Yeah, they're still uh, they're still feeling pretty good about uh, the way this one is going. I have to say, even losing out on that last dragon, right? They they could afford to give that one over. I don't think they're really too worried. Still and it's also... On, uh... oh. oh, go ahead. 
I was just going to say, it's also one of the better draws they could have hoped for on either side, really, because now stacking the dragons mm. really is not going to be a game-winning situation. You're giving up Chemtech. That's it. Yeah, very, very true. Not uh, really too much value, I don't think, for the Chemtech Soul in this particular game. You no, know, there is some threat of people getting getting burst down. You know, the Syndra execute damage, you know, the Viego execute damage on the ultimate. You know, maybe if you have a Chem Soul, then you survive to like get I auto attacked one more really. time uh, yeah it's it's cancel yeah no, like not gonna lie even with cancel i just think that stindra graves pretty much means oh you're dead. rumble's in trouble this is triops a little bit of a sticky situation uh, flashing away from the heartbreaker he's got his own jungler here but said he's gonna get charged into the oh, wall no. heroically <laughs> by the poppy and the damage is there from the viego the engage into the DPS, the top jungle for Wham, looking good. And they're on to Shirley Wokian with the Graves body. Going to quick draw over the wall and immediately heartbreak back into the pit and secure that objective. Exactly, not really having to use the Graves for match after killing him, but really unlucky series of events there for Q QL City, where you pretty much are there for, sa uh, for the fact of saving your top laner and then immediately just get engaged on traded and killed you cannot do anything at that point i don't think he was even able to throw an ultimate out to try and escape yeah. he just got bursted out immediately and it works massively for the side of william and mary because it's not only the kill flash from the rumble is down as well and it's herald also oh absolutely that was a big win for them on that top look at this Ham anthony teleporting into the bot lane now he says there's no more turret plates there's no longer a reason for me to go top lane ever again i'm playing with kaisa now See it top lane, and that's going to be the poppy hovering around here. But QCL City is in position to defend against any potential dives that could come through. I think it was actually an engage from the uh, Rakan that they followed up on because uh, Quickness is down and Flash is down on the Rakan as well. Mm. So I guess it was the mid. Flash that was secured from Frozen then in response. Keep yeah. himself safe. Oh. Wokian gonna drop Harold here, but immediately gets engaged on as there was a ward in that bush. Viego's gonna try and flash away, but the feathers will clip him over the wall, and that's gonna be a shutdown picked up by Frozen. The Herald will charge and will take the first brick from that bot tier one, but a shutdown going over to the Zaya is honestly a decent trade that I'm sure Mythic Creation are gonna be content to take. 100%. Huge, huge blunder there by Wokian on the Viego to die just like that. Give up such a huge shutdown. He was 5-1 and one before that death. That means that he gave up, uh, I would like to confirm it just in case really quickly, uh, around 300 gold. Yeah, 300 gold uh, off the bounty plus the kill. That's like 700 gold that he just, that the side just got out of nowhere. Yeah, it was very, very significant for sure. Let's see what Frozen's going to be picking up here. It looks like the... Uh... Completed Berserker's Greaves, maybe holding out for... Oh, yeah, he's got uh, 1,300 there. Picks up the BF Sword in addition. So that is feeling really nice for the Zaya for sure. Second or a third dragon, rather, spawning right now, TDS. We do have some control over the area for William and Mary at the moment. As Wilkin going to step forward. Going to get stunned up, though, over the wall from the Scatter. Will come out from Paradox. Still, it's going to be at the side of Wham that have all of this vision control in the river, and they're going to go immediately onto that dragon. Oh, Rumble is here. Yeah, pretty good equalizer right in front of the pit. Triops now backing away, not wanting to get engaged on the quickness. Grand entrance combo will be sidestepped from the Rumble. Now the wait, wait, wait. the dragon will go over to Woken as the Viego picks up the second for the squad. Heathcliff forced to back away now as the shutdown has come through from the Kaiser of Viego oh, combo. The they go on the enemy mid laner, and that's going to be enough to swing the team fight in their favor. Zaya is pushed completely out, and it's going to be the two for one plus the objective, William and Mary. Woken was the Leona there, so probably could have looked for maybe a bit more aggressive uh, aggressiveness onto Frozen, but it doesn't matter. Great team fight coming in by William and Mary, securing a couple of kills, the Dragon as well, and importantly, they didn't lose huge champions. They just lost the Rakan, which is something that you're willing to give up in some of those fights, especially because Rakan typically just jumps in by himself. So as long as he dies, but they get something massive back, it's completely worth it for William and Mary, and they did that just now in the previous team fight. Kaisa also just completing the Nasher suit. That is so big for future oh, fights. Yeah. That's that's Kaisa online now. Nufi Cheese going to be threatening everybody on this opposite team. Uh, that is going to be really, really tough to deal with for them, for Mythic Creation. And yeah, I, I admit I was really worried when the engage from Mage of None was 
uh, didn't quite land onto the rumble, but it didn't really matter because the Rakan was able to push Triops so far away from the rest of the fight and Rumble being such a big part of the team at this point in the game as there it is. There is Rumble being a big part of the team as he gets the kill on the Merlin in the bottom lane. Diego was in the area, but just not able to respond quick enough. It was just such a such an instant uh, engagement onto the victor there. He was there and then he wasn't. He pretty much died instantaneously. And that's a bit of what I'm talking about with the amount of just burst that can come through from the side of... of uh, just quickly because I'm blanking on the name of Mythic Creation. Importantly... Oh, wait. You have a cheese? Yeah, cheese is okay, he's though. He's got a recon as well to do a little bit of peeling. We're all right. Ooh, Syndra, scatter? Not quite. Everything is fine. Nobody died there. But if someone gets caught out of position, like they get bursted out immediately, just like we saw with the picture. So that's why, even though it's game tech, I don't think it's going to matter that much. And also, I think that they, they need to not misstep massively. That's why I wanted to quickly talk about as well the team fight because the point that you were making with triumphs getting pushed away, it's so important in that fight because the equalizer was already down. They already throw the equalizer down, they didn't find the massive value that you're expecting. And when Equalizer is down, essentially Rumble has to come to you to find the value. But since he was pushed away, he didn't have anything to do in that fight. He was just a glorified Jordo at that point. Yeah, I mean, he was he was roasting a bird. You know, he was able to get down the, the Rakan at least, but uh, it was not enough. You know, just, uh, you know, birds, they don't I really have a lot of uh, meat on there. It's not going to fill you up, uh, TDS. You, know, you need a little bit yeah, more. Think... On the side of I mythic like... creation if you want to get your comeback meal in as mage of none pops the quickness once again not going to get roasted this time pushes out the graves sticking graves... their claim over the chicken camp is wham does grave roast rakan as well if he's hitting him isn't it like hmm. shooting it uh i mean i i feel like graves is more of like the the hunter who like will go out and he, he'll get the bird and then Rumble is like the chef who will put it on the Barbie. You know what I mean? Okay, that's fair. Yeah, I, I, I can I can see that. Yeah. But we'll see if they're going to be able to accomplish that much more this game because they are, you know, uh, they're not ahead. And this is a composition where, you know, I, I think we were of the opinion that they kind of need to be ahead if they're going to be able to win out here. Uh, you know, they do have the Leona. So if you, if you can... Get that huge engage onto the Kaisa and like blow up Cheese or Wokian at the start of a fight. You know, you maybe maybe there's an angle there. You know, they have some tools still. They have a lot of burst damage that, that where they may be able to make something like that happen. But I feel like things are just gonna continue to get a little bit easier to play out for William and Mary the longer we go. And at the very least, the poke from the Kaisa is not going to hurt that much, and she since she's going for the uh, Ginzos instead of going the uh, real. Ludens, it's mm. not going to be as difficult to survive the poke damage of the Kai'Sa. Oh, I don't think you want to be here, Merlin. I think Triops wins this. Yeah, he thinks so yeah. too. He's gonna rock a belt in, then he's got the flame spitter, and he's gonna get the kill. He's going very, very low though, and the heartbreaker is flashed away from the Rumble Surprise, but the flash follow is there from Wilkie, and he does get the shutdown, and he does make it a one for one in that bottom side. Dragon coming up once again now. TDS 20 seconds on that second chem tech. 4v4 on Summoner's Rift. Poppy with a teleport. Anthony going back to base right now. Going to get in position to potentially join up with the rest of the team. Poke. the side. Mythic creation. They're pushed back into this choke point on the ramp into the blue buff. Poppy has teleported into the bottom side. So Kaisa's oh. a little bit separated from the team here at the moment. Does have the killer instinct, but needs to be careful for Cheese that does not get engaged on right now. The side of Mythic Creation have been forced to go back into mid lane to maintain some dying priority as Victor here. has respawned. Triops also coming up right now is going to have the teleport as well. Oh. If Rumble wants to join him, but the dragon's oh, already been the chased. Engage. Is there Wait, what? The Mage of None, and that is going to be the cleanup that comes through as Kaisa is going in with the Killer Instinct. It's Yanthony with the double kill. Poppy coming alive here at 24 and a half minutes. Cheese, though, in trouble from Triops is getting burned down by the Equalizer and the Flame Spitter will come out as Triops gets himself a big old shutdown, but still that is going to be a pretty positive play for William and Mary on Chemtech's sole point now. Yeah, it's really nice that they get the kill on the Kai'Sa back, but the team fight, the massive team fight from William and Mary winning them another huge amount of gold, plus the dragon as well, like you're pointing out, sole point secure. And yes, I may not think the Chemtech dragon is going to matter that much, but guess what does matter? The Elder. 
and gaining that sort of advantage, especially when you're already ahead and your composition is going to keep on scaling, for the Elder that should be around 8 minutes when, when you're able to fight around it, or 10 minutes for uh, when you're able to fight around it, that's going to be so many power spikes for your team and so much value for yourself. I also... Wait, Merdin? Ooh, Merlin on the sidestep from the Solar Flare. Nice. Shield of Daybreak will come up with a follow-up. Not there. Frozen. Hardy a little bit low on that Zaya. Didn't have any summoners. Not willing to commit forward in that instance. Not sure what Heathcliff was looking for there. Yeah, I'm not sure what they were trying to accomplish there, but nothing much lost anyway. And also, just, just a quick point out, I don't know why Yamtoni didn't go for the Zaya there, but could have been such a free kill. That being said, he got a good stun, so it doesn't really matter at the end. Yeah, sorry. Is that in the uh, last team fight after the dragon that you were? Yeah, wrecking? when when the the Rakan engaged, the both of them were in the on mm. the wall, and Frozen was there. I thought he was going to just run Frozen into the wall and not allowed him to to escape, but choose the, the Leona, and I respect the decision there. At the end, they won the fight, so it's not like it was a massive blunt. Yeah. And it can be a little bit tricky as well if they were really just like stacked up on top yeah, of one another. Matter. You know, it could be a little bit of uh, difficulty to actually click on the appropriate target. You know, something I'm sure we've oh. all suffered before is the quickness. The grand entrance over the wall, not going to connect though. Mage of None not quite able to find it there. The team though is going to be able to lock down that turret in the top lane. At the very least, Poppy is completely back on the game and now you do have a lot of value with your tank. And also, yes, you blew quickness there, but the control, the vision control, and the the control that right now William and Mary does have over on the top side port of Aaron is quite nice to have, and it does give them the opportunity that for the next dragon fight, instead of trying to go for dragon, they can actually just decide to to trade and go for Baron if they really want to, if they are able to bait. Uh, okay, Shirelia's popping out for Mage of None. Looks oh, to be engaged onto the Leona. Cliff going down very, very low, but able to flash away, able to stay alive. It's going to be the Rakan who gets taken down. Scatter of the Week, not quite enough range on that one. Not going to be stunning anybody. But once again, it's a little bit of an engage from William and Mary that does not find the mark. And they are looking for Baron. They have Leona backing, but she's the only one that was affected. Yeah. Everyone else is healthy enough, and they can look for it now. Victor is bottling and he has no teleport, so this is actually a perfect opportunity for it. They're burning the Baron down pretty quickly. TDS is down to 50%. Oh, Poppy is in the area. Gonna get the, the hammer. The uh, hammer will knock out the Zaya, and Triops is gonna get engaged on his cheese. Oh, goes no. in with the Killer Instinct and has all the damage that is needed. Easily picks up the double kills. This team fight is so split now. Woken with a stolen scatter with a lockdown onto City. Oh, but the Diego has gone a little bit too far. And it's going to get CC'd up by the Leona Featherstorm coming out from Frozen there as well. And they burst down the enemy jungler. Kai's up failing that W so unlucky because that could have been the reason for the Diego. But they still stopped the Baron buff. They got a really good amount of kills. Oh, whoa. Merlin flashing for the Chaos Storm. Not quite going to be enough he gets it. to get. Oh, does in the end actually get the kill? Must have been another Luden's proc at the end there. And that's going to be the push. Now the Siege onto the Tier 2 in mid lane. No AD carry, no mid laner. Nobody here to defend right now for Mythic. Not quite able to take down that entire turret, are William and Mary. But they do get a lot more on the back end there. 4,000 gold now is the lead. It's the lead, and they have a lot of value on their side to just now keep on pushing forward. The Diego with three items. The Victor now completing a second item as well going to have a lot of value, plus the stopwatches. Look at the amount of clocks or of watches that are currently in the pocket of each of the members from William and Mary. They have three, so that means that stasis can be massive in the coming fights. Yeah, that is uh, really, really good. They are going to be happy about that additional playmaking for sure. Going to make it really difficult oh, for Victor Victor Merlin. to find these bursts. Merlin might have to use his immediately, though. Going to have to stop time for a little while. I don't know if he's going to be able to stop it for long enough. But here comes Anthony trying to create a little bit of disruption. Finds a lot of One CC, down. and that's going to be the trade back onto the jungler. City taken down. Clip oh, on the front the lines. In go. Tysa into the back line is cleaning up everybody. It's Triops able to survive for a while. Cheese forced to go golden with his own stasis, but it'll be more than enough for William and Mary to take the team fight. They find a massive four for two, and they can push straight down this bottom lane. They just have so much power, so much control, and so much value. And like I was pointing out, the stopwatches coming in clutch. I hate that item so much, but it's so <laughs> effective when you're able to use it in these sort That's of important team fights. Last potential team fights where everything can change immediately with one pick, 
that stopwatch comes in massive for Merlin KL, being able to stop time enough that the rest of the team can collapse and get the win, so crucial for them. And now with Soul on hand, not the best Soul, but doesn't matter because the gold lead is what's going to matter after this point. More gold, more damage for them. Sonja's completed for Kai's as well. And now Baron Bob looking really, really, really good for them. I mean, we just saw it in that last team fight, right? Nufi Cheese is untouchable. On this Kaisa, that's why you lock it in on B1 every time if it's yep. not banned, right? It's just get the champion is so broken right now. You get to this point in the game and you just can't stop her. She just runs teams over almost single handedly, it feels like. You can try, but I'm not sure if it's going to matter that much later on. And that's why you also. I'm surprised to not see the rail. Like, I think Leona, to a certain degree, does a good job at that. But you're lacking on way too much point-and-click CC. Leona alone cannot do it. You need more CC to back her up. And the only CC to back up this Leona is the, the Syndra Scatter of the Week. And now they're starting Baron Ball, but I think yeah. the Anthony can push them away. The creation, know what's going on. They're trying to force their way in here to contest, but Yamdeni doing a fantastic job of frontlining, keeping everybody Baron's out of the pit. The Baron's gonna get taken down, and Mythic Creation didn't even oh. get close. In goes Kaisa with the Killer Instinct once again. It's gonna be the Rumble deleted right at the start of this one. Kaisa is gonna get the traded Kaisa? back as the Killer Instinct was very aggressive in this particular team fight, but I don't know ultimately uh, TDS if it's going to matter. The team fight's already looking pretty one for William and Mary. It's only Heathcliff and City left. The Leona gonna get taken down. That was just Graves. Running for the hills, the four for two once again. William and Mary on top, and this time we've got three of them wearing purple. Exactly, it's really not going to matter with these three members with their power. It's going to be on the graves, oh, but I'm not sure if he's going to be able to escape. The steadfast presence said, yep. oh, denies the quick draw, Perfect. and there's the ace that will be completed. And that means that, well, it's not going to be game actually. I think too much time taken to be able to push onto the inhibitor so with four members spawning right now i don't think there's going to be enough time to close out the game but it doesn't matter they still have such a big lead over 10,000 gold plus the baron buff yes carries may not have it but they are not going to be alone so it doesn't matter yeah i would like to see just uh honestly uh honestly either a 4-1 or just all five uh, of these uh, William and Mary players just run down either top lane or bot lane and continue pressuring this base. You know, still got 90 seconds on the Baron buff for their three members. They're not on carries, you know, as, we're, as you were just saying. Um, so they definitely have time to do a little bit more damage before that buff wears off. Well, technically, Diego would count as a carry, no? Like, sure, fair enough, yeah. Just not uh, damage. the position. It's The jungle position is, in, by definition, a carry position. But your your point is well taken, TDS, that yes, the Diego in this instance certainly has a little bit of a carry himself. And with a score in like 10-3 and 10, we have to talk about Wookie in this game being really important in a lot of those fights and also with how he started the game. Yes, he died a couple of times weirdly, but his impact has oh, been massive. Look at that damage that from damage. the carry. Diego, it oh. goes to Kaisa and Quila CL City is on a blinking health escape. bar. This city is full of crime and QCL's a victim oh, of no. murder. It's going to be an absolute wipe in the base as Mage of None goes underneath the next turn. So as far as we're counting, going to get taken down. Can he escape? He's going to get traded back at the oh, turn. Wait was not taken this tier three is doing a lot of work for mythic creation right now but ultimately it was some unpaid overtime the turret will collapse under the weight of trying to carry this game for mythic creation and it will be the end in 34 minutes for william and mary they take the first nexus of the night yeah i'm just ready there i thought it was a quadra but it's just going to be the nexus from the side of Mythical Creation being destroyed right now. And what a game from the side of William and Mary, controlling a lot of the facets of, uh, from it, trying to get the better team fights in their favor, and importantly, crucially, not letting the early push affect them as much as possible. And I want to, to talk about the soul links because I think that Merlin, Kale, and Yamthony were the ones that were able to survive most of the difficult situations that they were suffering. Like Yamthony was 40, uh, more than 40 CS behind, and getting pushed to his turret consistently. But it never affected the amount of pressure that Woken was feeling, and it was able to turn around a lot of good situations at the end. That's really important to have in your soul lingers. They know how to take pressure and then provide for your jungler in the meanwhile. Absolutely. Anthony was down but never out. He was just playing Poppy in that early game, and then he kept playing Poppy for the rest of the game as well. 
four zero and thirteen for Yanthony when all is said and done. Absolutely exquisite weak side performance from the top laner here of William and Mary. And of course, Newfie Cheese on the Kaisa as well, topping out those damage charts just over 27k and found the damage, found those backline assassinations in the team fights. William and Mary looking like they're firing on all cylinders. 13 kills as well this game for Wolkian on the Viego. Very nice performance from them. They really, uh, it was a little bit of a slow start. They did, you know, they were a little bit behind in the solo lanes, like you were just saying, TDS. But ultimately, it really did feel like it was just a slow build up the uh, the gold graph up and to the right for these guys uh, for for pretty much this whole game. It was really well done overall, and huge props to how they played it out. And it's going to be really fun seeing them on the second game, how it's going to change for both sides. Not only for William and Mary, but Mythic Creation are the ones that need to now change more things. They need to try and adapt to the second game because their backs are against the wall. They are the ones that can lose out on this series if they don't try and make something better from what they have. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, we'll, we'll see in just a little while what kind of adaptations Mythic Creation will be making to try and get themselves back into the series here and tie things up at one-to-one. -one. But before we get there, TDS... Uh, let's really quickly hand out the POG award. Who do you think was the strongest performer for William and Mary here in game number one? Yeah, I think uh, I, I think Woken on the Diego. Mm. Yeah, had that one time where he overstepped a little bit, dropping the Herald in the bot lane. Remember, just kind of walked over a ward and gave over a shutdown to the Zaya, but. Uh, yeah. There were very, very few missteps this game for the Viego. I do agree. Just, you know, those those couple of instances uh, where he did maybe overextend slightly and ended up giving over some gold. But, you know, the objective control was definitely there. I uh, was playing out the early game quite nicely, you know, able to support the bottom lane, you know, the, the pathing, the priorities were there for Wokian. He understood that Poppy was going to be doing some some weak siding up there and was exactly where he needed to be able to get the, the gold into the appropriate pockets, including his own here in this first game. So really nice stuff from the jungler. We are now going to go to a short break guys, but don't go anywhere. When we get back, it's going to be game two of tonight's match. We'll see you soon.
All right, everybody, welcome back to Style Esports. We are jumping straight into our game to draft TDS. The teams have swapped sides. We're going to have Mythic Creation moving over to the blue side this time around, William and Mary on the red. And it is time to see if Kaisa will find her way back home onto this red side ban list. William and Mary, what's it going to be? Are they really going to let it open? Uh, like they played it just now. They should know that they this know. was really strong. They did. I think they were the ones that banned the six in the previous game. So would be interesting if they decided that the six is going to be the same problem as a poking Kaisa. But honestly, I just think that the Kaisa's versatility and damage is going to be much more of a problem. Okay, and they will Insta make Maokai. the correct decision. And yeah, that was the insta lock on the Maokai. It was also still pretty high priority we've seen in pro play as well. Yeah. Well, of course, the, the point and click CC and the ultimate values just so much on the Maokai and the saplings still hurt quite a bit. So you don't want to try and mess up with that, with, with the Maokai particularly. That being said, Rel is still open. We cannot stop bickering about it because the champion is still quite good. And I think a lot of teams would value having that sort of CC potential. The Karthus picked here. Wow. And interestingly, Karthus right now could be flex between bot lane and, and, and jungle as well. But this does give you the opportunity of having that super late game thread carry, kind of like the Viego, but I would argue even a bit better than the Viego because of the amount of damage that he does with just one R. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, can be a really, really powerful pick. You know, I believe he was nerfed uh, this patch a little bit. Uh, those nerfs targeting uh, bot lane carry Karthus primarily, if I'm not mistaken so uh we'll, we'll see was. where the karthus goes this time around that is a couple of interesting lock-ins as the zigs will make it through here and will get locked in by mythic creation alongside that blitzcrank melio for william and mary leads me to believe that it is not Ooh. the karthus bottom lane but the malzahar is going to in fact be the last lock-in i guess they want to make sure that they can get that malzahar uh into the zigs but there's no guarantee zigs is going mid either is there it really, there really isn't like it, this could be blitzcrank six in the bot lane and the malzahar just thrown into the mid lane the thing here with the malzahar i i like the point and click potential that it does have and obviously the shield to try and block the blitzcrank could have been great but then you also see that there's a six and a maokai like that shield gets popped in a second with, with any ability so the shield body from the malzahar which is kind of big for his uh kid kind of gets completely destroyed there now you need to have an ad carry to follow up on damage because if Karthus is one of your main carries, Malzahar is not going to be one of your main carries. You need someone to provide the big amount of damage. And now, it, and that's where we need to see William and Mary, what their focus will be with both Saya and Barris band. Could it be a, a potential, maybe Jinx angle with Emilio, Cogmile, the Ash as well. Does give okay. you a lot of range. But I, I feel like there's a bit, a, a bit lack of damage really. Yeah, I, I hear you TDS. That could potentially be a concern for William and Mary. They also are lacking frontline right now. So sort of True. in a little bit of a similar predicament actually to what we saw Mythic Creation find themselves in when they were on red side in the previous game. You know, I do think that the Ash is a really strong combo with the Melio. Uh, it really enhances sort of your your setup, you know, when the Melio can increase the range on the Ash auto, so you can get that slows on those autos from really long range. Uh, there's the Jin lock in alongside the Blitzcrank, so it is going to be Ziggs in the mid lane, as you were just about to mention, I think. So I still think that for the Malzahar, it's not the best just because your shield still gets popped with anything. And then point and click, Maokai comes into your lane and you can die. That being said, it's much easier to just go into a, a wave clear fight if the six is uh, and you're just going to not really try and kill each other, you just try and w and push the lane as fast as possible, and that's it. The Jace over in the top lane, not much of tank value and mythic creation apart from the Maokai, but the poking value is going to be really, really great from them, and that's where the front lane needs to come. I honestly would love to see more something like a Zion hmm. than the Poppy. What was that? What was that that you were calling for, TDS? I would have liked more the Cyan, really. Cyan or Orn, I would have liked more. Hmm. Interesting. But the Poppy yeah. really picked. Yeah, I mean, why why would you have preferred those those other options? Poppy is not necessarily bad, and I do think the the hammer can be good. But the issue is that both Orn and Cyan have more straightforward ways to make a fight happen. If something like because one big thing for Mythic Creation is a poke, they have six Gene and Jace. 
with Zion and Orn, or Orn, you have the choice of just saying, okay, screw it, we go in because they are poking us way too much and we need to make something happen. Poppy is not really a champion that gives you that choice. And I don't think that you can win a poking war or out sustain the huge amount of poke that it's going to come through because there's magic damage and physical damage. That's what I'm scared here with the Poppy. Mm. So that, that's why I, I like more the Cyan Orn choice. But the Poppy as a mid shield still works to a certain degree. Yeah, yeah, it, it can work, uh, certainly. And, uh, you know, Yanthony obviously had a great performance on the Poppy in game number one. So with that uh, being factored in, I certainly don't mind seeing it get taken once again here for William and Mary into game two. Um, but certainly, you know, we'll have to track and see if, if the Poppy is going to be able to absorb that pressure and, and still manage to stay alive herself. Because there is, as you were just mentioning, an incredible amount of poke that will be coming out from Mythic Creation. Uh, they have a lot of range, a lot of damage that can come in from very, very far away. So uh, that is looking potentially really, really good for them. And having just a Poppy on the other side to try and, and soak up any of these rogue skill shots uh, does seem a little bit uh, uh, inadequate uh, for the side of William and Mary. Yep. It's, it's essentially going to be believing the power of friendship so that you don't die immediately. And then you can try and turn around the fights. Yeah, yeah, but uh, turning around the fight also difficult, right? Because William and Mary, they don't really have a ton of engage this time around. There's no Rakan uh, that can be jumping in here, you know, with the uh, quickness, with the grand entrance, with that long range CC. So, um, yeah, they're they're gonna have to find some some angle. It, it's it's gonna be tricky, I think. They're gonna need to find and engage somehow uh, without getting poked down, and this is all with them not really drafting any engage. So yeah, that's that's a that's a toughie. It's going to be difficult, but there's I, I do think that there's tools and late game wise, I do value William and Mary's comp a bit more. They have a uh, hyper carry in the form of the Carthus with the value that he's going to get later on the game. Maltahar does get really good value the longer the game goes and the dot damage can be really messy in team fights where you can spam one, two, three even sometimes. And then also the Milio as a support can have so much scaling value as well with the client's potential, but also the consistent healing. So if they can reach 30 minutes, I can see William and Mary's come being able to be great. But before that, it's all mythic creation really on my eyes. Yeah, yeah. The the scaling is is reasonably good on, on both sides, I want to say. I mean, you have the, the Ziggs on one side and the Karthus on the other. I feel like both of those guys are really just become, you know, nukes, you know, once you t get towards the late game, and they get yeah. those AP scalings online. Uh, it's just a crazy amount of damage from both of those champions. And both AD carries a little bit more oriented towards the utility side of things. So the the compositions do seem a little bit mirrored, at least in, in that sense, in terms of what the damage profiles are, profiles are going to look like later on in the game. Um, but it does really seem like things are probably going to be a little bit easier to play out for the side of Mythic Creation. They, they have a very cohesive poke comp here. So assuming they can land the poke and not have anybody get caught out, things should be looking pretty good for them. Is that your assessment as well, TDS? You feel like, uh, are, are you feeling like Mythic Creation might bring us to game three tonight? It would be really fun to see a game three tonight with what both teams are capable of. But I'm, I'm going to stick with my gods. I think William and Mary may be able mm. to do it with the late game. Just because I do Fair think enough. that teams give too much opportunity for that to happen sometimes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, our previous game did feel relatively one-sided, and it didn't end until almost 35 minutes, right? So yeah. if we go a similar distance in this one, the Karthus will certainly be online. He's slightly nerfed again on this patch, but... Uh, you know, once we get to towards that 30 minute mark, I don't know if we're really gonna be feeling the nerfs all too much. So we shall see now. Mythic creation from the blue side will be able to tie things up or if William and Mary will secure their dynastic domination with the two zero. Don't go anywhere. We're gonna have the continuation of style week two right after this.
you just take us in. And everyone is ready for the level one, just waiting. Wait, actually, the gene didn't go in. What are you doing, Frozen? You have to go with everyone else for the level one. It's like it's going to matter, but. Yeah, the Blitzcrank level one is pretty mandatory, right? When you do run the Blitzcrank, you got to try something. Uh, Janet just playing defense this time around, wanting to make sure that counter invade didn't come through. Uh, but I don't think anybody's really going to be finding one another as the five stack did come in from William and Mary to defend sure? in that banana brush. Oh, well, we are sticking around for Mythic Creation. Oh, Ooh, oh, so oh. clever from Woken to check the bush there. How did he know? Hacks. Hacks. Someone hacks check his PC. Confirms. Not normal. Yeah, well, either way, uh, that's really nice from William and Mary. That will the deep ward will come out from Mythic Creation in that uh, topside jungle of uh, WAM. But uh, certainly, they were looking for a little bit more, hoping to find a little bit more with that invade. Not going to be the case. 100%. That's one of the advantages that the Blitzcrank does give you. So the fact that they were able to dissuade that invade, massive for the side of William and Mary. It's going to still take them quite a while, but that could have just made their game even longer than it needed to be. Jungler is going to be pathing to opposite sides this time around. Woken on the carry once again. The Karthus. See what is going to come through from this champion. Of course, really likes to power farm through these early levels. I'm not expecting anything to come through too early necessarily. Yeah, I really don't expect to see any sort of big action from the from the Carthus early on. He's even more farm heavy compared to the Piego, where Piego can still train look for certain things. The Carthus wants to farm. He wants to get to level six and press R from his base, farm more, and then get items. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I gotta say, the Carthus been doing a pretty good job of farming so far. He's about to finish his fifth camp. And Maokai just starting his fourth, so Wokian just blitzing through this first clear. That's a true Cardus player right there. He knows yeah. how to clear and just fast clear everything and anything. That's first clear completely done for the Karthus before three minutes. He's already really channeling the recall. Yeah. Great pacing, great timing. Important though, or important if the bot lane is pushing like this, that Karthus comes down here for the Scarlet Crab because maybe he's able to not only stop a potential Scarlet Crab take, but also a potential gank. Malka is hovering by and they have the Blitzcrank hook. Mm, City, thinking about it. Cliff, looking for it. Hook Ooh. will come out. Flash from the Melio to deny the hook from landing. I'm Great honestly surprised there. he went for the Melio there. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, uh, yeah. Could have uh, probably got the Ash Flash instead. Would have been maybe a little bit more happy about that even not gonna be the case though and Wilkin will be able to get down here we'll be able to take this south scuttle now is hovering for his bottom lane as they're trying to get the push blitzcrank is gonna look again here the hook is gonna go wide though Wilkin is biding his time the card is gonna be very patient here it's a deadly flash oh, the the and that's gonna be the ghost signal for the Maokai, but a beautiful flash from cheese to try and create some more space might not be enough though as the ash is going down extremely low in goes the Karthus. the ash will get taken out for the first blood but it's heat cliff that picks it up and now frozen flashed in to try and get that last hit's gonna end up giving over himself to the Karthus as wokian picks up his first of the game, one for one in the bottom lane as the top laners dueling as well. The hammer form comes out from Triumph's Poppy going very, very low. The Anthony desperately He's trying dead. to get back to his trip, but one more auto attack will come through. And Triops on the NA Jace picks up a kill of his own. Importantly, in that top lane play, Triops had back previously. He had the item lead and he didn't use teleport, so he's able to come back into lane healthy and with more items to try and get the kill onto the Anthony up there. First time we've seen Yamtony solo killed like that, even in the previous True. game with all the harassment that the Rumble was pulling through, he didn't die at all. So important first kill up here for Triops and being able to secure that really easily out there. And then the play on the bot lane, overall really chaotic, really hectic, important that the, the Blitzcrank didn't use Flash, so it could potentially lead to a future play as well. But it's all on the setup. They were pushing the lane consistently. That means that the Blitzcrank and the Maokai were going to look for another play just like that. But Karthus was ready for it. He gets a kill, he gets really good value, and is on route to get his ultimate really quickly, but not only that, his first item. Yeah, oh. already got the Dark Seal as well, but that hook did come through onto the Melio. Mage of None going down 
pretty low here. He's got a little bit of a speed boost from the campfire and will be able to scamper out towards safety. She's able to get back a little bit of return damage, but the hooks are landing for Heathcliff. Yeah, not gonna lie. Oh, Yamtony as well. Oh, that shock blast hurt. Yamtony is very, very low up there underneath the turret with no teleport. Really tough spot for the Poppy. It does have his jungler, but Woki in low mana. At least it looks like the Karthus will be able to walk up here and soak the XP from the wave. The best you can hope for is William and Mary in that kind of situation. Ooh, the Malzahar is in bot lane. By the way, the Nethergrass can come out on a heat clip. It's going on very, very low. One more Q. The silence, but the potion ticking for the crank, and he gets oh, the hook. Oh, oh my. Merlin steps up too far, gets pulled underneath the turret, gives over a kill to the Jin, and now Paradox is here. She's in a terrible position right now, desperately trying to get one back. But it was the side of William and Mary overstepping in this bottom lane. Now Paradox flashing forward. Oh. He's gonna land the bomb, it might not matter. Just needs one more auto attack, that will be enough. As Ziggs picks up his first, it will be Wokian getting one back with the Requiem but a big play from Mythic Creation in this bottom lane to get themselves into the lead. Yeah, Carthus does get one back, but what a big misplay by, by Meriden KL. Really badly executed, going for the ultimate onto the Blitzcrank, and that is not necessarily a bad thing, but the way that you go for it is really, really bad. Committing for it with no one close by, your E on cooldown so you cannot flash E to try and get the last tick, and then after you get hit by the basic attack from the gene and your shield is popped, you still continue to move forward. You are going to die every day of the week after that, and now Yamthony may be dead here. Oh, that's nice from Yamthony to try and get underneath the turret. The uh, Keeper's Verdict gets the double knockup, but it's not enough as Triumph secures that kill. What a roam from Heathcliff into this top lane. The Blitzcrank making his presence felt across the map right now. That will be the ghost signal to get onto the dragon for William and Mary. We can see Paradox and uh, QCL moving over to try and contest. Dragon down to about 50%. Maokai, no flash, gonna have a hard time getting into this pit. And it looks like the side of Mythic Creation will be content to give that up in exchange for another kill on their Jace in the top lane. Yeah, it was going to be almost impossible to be able to actually contest that dragon with how far ahead this Karthus is. So at the very least, responding with the kill on top lane with the dragon collection. But Yanthony, compared to the previous game, he's getting completely and utterly destroyed. The previous game, at the very least, he was surviving. This time around, there's no surviving. There's nothing. He's just getting destroyed. He's get, He's got infinitely more deaths than he had in, in game number one. Infinity. Pretty high number, TDS. It's not, it's really bad when you're in an infinity deficit and you're going to suffer oh, like that. They're hooking the bottom lane is on a cheese this time. That is the priority the target. Ulti, We've gotten pulled in by Heatcliff. The curtain will be called. Oh, we don't have very low health bars here though. So the, the curtain call is really uh, entertainment for William and Mary at this point. Nice steadfast presence there to deny the hammer form from the Jace. It's still one hook away from potentially someone dying down here with no flash just yet on the ash and the flash just back up for Demilio. But everything else kind of apart from Yamthony that is suffering really much, the, the Carthus really is the thing that I'm looking forward here because 2-0, level seven, yeah. farming pays really, really well. Like he is going to be one of the main carries of the team, if not the main carry. So as long as he's fine, I think everything is okay. Oh, he team. might not be fine right now as the Infernal Flash Bomb delayed. will come out. And Wookie and flashes and still goes down. Nice pick there from QCL City with the invade, with the lockdown. Sets up for the mid laner. And that is going to be the Maokai actually picking up the last hit. But a big kill onto Wookie and knocks off those Dark Seal stacks and slows down that snowball from the Karthus. What is up with the late flashes from people? Oh, oh Nether Grasp underneath the turret. Oh, the Requiem is going to come out as well. The Satchel Charge forces the flash as Merlin does not want to die to a turret for the second time in a row, but it will be in the end a kill in the mid lane as Woking and Merlin teaming up there. Mid jungles from both sides finding some success. Pretty sure he doesn't die there, but at the end of the day with no oh, flash now has to be extra careful. It should be fine. Yamthon is the one that is not fine. He can get dive at any second now if the Maokai decides to. Yeah, this Poppy is uh, going to be okay for now as QCL City did decide to go for the reset. But yeah, this this top lane is a struggle. Triops just picked up his third plate on this Jace. Jace is 
the richest champion in the game right now. 4,700. Oh, and right as we're talking about him, in he goes underneath the turret, brings down the hammer onto Yanthony, who is really struggling here in game two. Yeah, this is also, by the way, why you don't pick Poppy with, uh, with champions like the Carthus. Not because it's necessarily not going to work out really effectively or not, but because if you lose any sort of presence up there in the top lane, Carthus doesn't really want to go help you. He doesn't really want to have yeah. to go babysit you because he has to farm, he has to get his items. And it's not really on Woken to try and defend him. It's more so on the on how Yanthony essentially messed up by himself and gave up the lane for Triumphs to try and win, win it out. Now he has to pretty much cover for it by himself or stop dying and not make any more mistakes because Carthus cannot just blindly Chain for Strayer going to come down in this bottom side, but Maokai is here. The Nature's Grasp will come out and so will the Hook. And Melia, you can't cleanse that. Ash locked up underneath the tier one. The curtain is called once again. And this time it will be the finale for Cheese as Jin Frozen picks up his third on the Jin. Needs one more in the near future, though really be a true gen player of course yeah this game is more and more looking like it's going to be a build three like i don't like calling games done before they actually are done but it's just like the difference the way that it's being played and oh, this flash for the knock in Merlin in trouble one more bomb there it is paradox picking it up it's malzahar going look at this anthony is back in this top lane. He's already chunked down so low and his turrets down to a single plate. Triops is just non-stop pressuring up here. It's about to complete the call as well. This very rich Jace just got even richer. The Anthony, I feel like he's got to go for the keeper's verdict on one of these waves to get Jace off of this turret. He's at risk of dying once again. In goes, he gets, gets another solo kill underneath the turret again. Triops is four and zero, just absolutely taking over. And honestly, like I really don't like to to call out like this some some things, but this was also counter picked technically. Like Yamthony yeah. got last pick, and he's been getting destroyed after getting the last pick. So you have to question what their decision making after that was. Paradox, oh, Paradox maybe greedy there to commit the satchel charge. To get the turret, oh, the Enchant Cusarero will come out. The reinforcements are here, though. Frozen has moved down. The Ruckman will come out. Should be enough damage to finish off the Ziggs. It's not, not enough. Paradox. Oh, he's burning down, though, oh, to the Leandres. The Leandres will get that kill onto Paradox. Now, Heathcliff in trouble. The charge won't get the Blitzcrank into the wall. And the dragon will be secured by Mythic Creation. Heathcliff will get taken down on the back end of this one. A 2-0 team fight for William and Mary, but they do lose the neutral. Yeah, they get two good kills back at the very least, and that's the most important part. You need to get gold, some, gold somewhere, and it doesn't matter if you have to commit more people. The important part is that you get the gold, and you don't lose anyone. Top lane turret was dead anyway, so you have to cut your losses short and try and do this sort of plays. Really nice play by William and Mary. Yeah, yeah, that is what they need to try and get themselves back in this one, but... Look at that gold lead at 14 minutes, TDS. That is insane. That's 7,000 plus gold at 14 minutes. That is a monumental lead. Yeah, so early on, especially against champions that are going to poke you out, it's going to be so scary to try and deal with. William and Mary has it really tough on them to try and win this situation out. Yeah, they're, they have their work cut out for oh, them no. for sure. And uh, Yanthony is looking at, like he might be in trouble once again. The knockback will come through. Steadfast Presence already utilized. Poppy's going to try and flash right, but the Shock Blast will connect. And Triops just made that look easy. It is much worse. And now Woken is trapped between a couple of rocks and a couple of different hard places as well. He's trying to get some fancy feet off, but it will not be fancy enough as Frozen does get that kill number four. Call it right here, folks. Jin's asking the other team to FF. He doesn't want to get any more kills this game. He just wants to head straight into that game number three. Oh. Oh, the flash away from Cheese in combination with the Melee Ultimate will keep him alive for now. But this turret is going to fall in the mid lane. And this gold lead is just growing and growing and growing. There's no way to stop it. They, they have to try and Great survive for as long as they can. But it's almost impossible like one hook here and someone's dead okay he failed Ooh, it's gonna be cliff not finding it this time around red buff gonna be stolen away though by city 
Oh. Thievery is the crime this time around in the city as the Enchanted Chris Rero will connect. Heathcliff, though, with enough uh, tenacity to not get stunned up for too terribly long. The hook oh, gonna the come hooking. through onto the Karthus. They're gonna burst down that main carry right away at the start of this fight. And Merlin is flashing into the back line, but Malzahar, where's your follow-up? Where are the reinforcements? They're already dead. Everybody's dead on the side of William and Mary. There's nothing at all that they were able to get going in that team fight. It's gonna be the complete ace, the clean wipe for Mythic Creation, and there's not even a Baron to go to. We're 15 and a half minutes in TDS. Burden, we are 15 minutes, 16 minutes in now. And it's more than 10k gold lead. They are above a 10k gold lead before 20 minutes are even close to come by. Destruction. This is just completely... Well, it's not, it's not impossible to turn around, but you need at the very least 20 minutes. And I'm not going to bet that they are going to get 20 minutes. Yeah, and uh, this is, you know, again, this is a composition for William and Mary that is suffering from a very similar ailment to what Mythic Creation were dealing with the last time around. They don't have the engage that's needed. They don't have the tools that are necessary to come back into a game when you're really far behind like this. All they have is damage. And, yep. and I mean, they've got a little bit of utility with the Ash, and they've got a Poppy who's... I mean, I don't think the Poppy really even counts as frontline at this point, unfortunately. It doesn't even have a completed item yet. Versus Jace is about to complete his third item. So, uh... And the third <laughs> item is going to be an LDR, by the way. So, even when the Poppy does get an item, like, the armor penetration is already there anyways. Yeah. Like, it's tough. This is so difficult to try and turn around. They need massive, massive miracles to make it happen. And I'm talking about Baron buff steals. I'm talking about... Uh, like a 75 years. minute slog where uh mythic creation forget that they're they have to destroy the nexus to win and they just like afk yeah. farm for 25 that could work out minutes. as well yeah something like that or we have you know several pcs disconnecting i don't know that's that's kind of what we're looking at as a potential that's the angle we're looking for now. Well, this can work out for some teams to try and lay out what they want to do in the third game as well, just in case. Because it's so difficult to try and turn around that at the very least it gives you thinking time for it. Like, what do we want to ban now? What do we want to take? Is the Nautilus worth compared to the Blitzcrank, for for example? Or do we want to take Blue Side once again? That's, this is the yeah, kind of that, situations big, right? that give you opportunity. That is good news for William and Mary, is they can be Blue Side for game number three. So that is, yeah. that is you know, a nice nice upside for us. For any of the William and Mary fans out there in chat, that's what you're hanging your hat on right now. Take oh. blue side game three, guys. Don't even worry about it. As the teleport will come out from Paradox, join up with the rest of the team in this bot side river. It's another chem soul this game, TDS. The second chem tech soul in a row. That is a little bit unfortunate, but uh, you know what else is unfortunate for Yanthony? The fact that he's dead again. Uh, I would argue that's even more unfortunate than actually just it's having a Chemtech soul. Yeah. Pretty unfortunate for sure. Uh, that was the first Chem Dragon going over. Still a whole whole minute. Ooh, oh my goodness, oh. is he just dead? He's, he's burning I, down. Oh, yep. the oh, a fourth shot! Frozen curves the bullet around Melio and is able to pick up that kill. It is kill number five for the Jin, so that is a little bit awkward, but I think he's going to be all right with it, all things considered, as we are now pushing down mid lane onto the inhibitor turret. We go for Mythic Creation. Might not even need a Baron, as they do have a Ziggs, who's pretty much just as good. Might not even need it, but probably will wait until they can get it. They don't want to risk anything just in case. Like, they know they can lose the series if they misplay really heavily. So at the very least, I'm just expecting them to push for a bit, try and poke around, go for a couple of hooks here and there, and then when Baron Buff is up, they can go for it. Oh. Okay, there's the engage. It's the Shirelia's Reverie. That's the engage that we have for William and Mary. It's not going to work out, though. Uh, they didn't actually manage the to get on top back. of anybody. Anthony is going to get hooked in, and then he charges forward very dead. bravely and possibly, well, yeah, definitely actually very foolishly also um, because there was, once again, no follow-up. Mousar is going to flash away from that very, very threatening robot and uh, will survive for now, but things just continuing to go from bad to worse for the side of WAM. This game is so... 
difficult to play out really the the situation where every champion just if one hook comes through but not even the hook like the hook is is the is the kind of jump scare that can just kill you immediately but then you you have bombs that you can see clearly that are coming on top of you that are going to kill you anyway from a safe distance so it's not like you have any sort of safe moment really to try and think around maybe this is the only opportunity they actually have of safety because after the back after baron is an objective that they want to try and collect after baron is collected who is wave clearing who is going to tank the the poke who is going to actually take away from the damage of the rest of the team and i don't think there's anyone oh okay jay's not gonna go in there wasn't sure if there was anybody behind merlin at that exact moment didn't want to be given away the maxed out shut down for no good reason you got to appreciate the uh respect there from triops dodges away from the crystal arrow as well he is very isolated right now he has the flash he's trying to create as much space as possible sidestepping on the lay waste as well from the karthus malzar desperately trying to get in range for the nether grass but cannot do so the jace too speedy does manage to get towards safety and now oh, the re-engage no, the, the punish could potentially come through as the collapse is there mage of none getting chunked down so extremely low malzar is grasping desperately to try and find something anything in this game but he will find nothing but death as Paradox will claim that last hit kill onto the Karthus as well. The Requiem, it comes out. It looks like it will be at least. No, it's nothing. Paradox will survive. And that is going to be the four for zero. Team fight plus the Baron for Mythic Creation. Yeah, it got completely tanked by the, by the Locket. The Locket fully uh... tanked the item. Oh. Well, Yamton is fine at the very least. What was that about Anthony? He's fine. He was able to push away Triop, so he shouldn't die. Oh, wait. No, sorry. Uh, no. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, oh, he's going to flash. Wait, wait. Uh, he had the Maybe. flash spell. Um, but Triop, he's going to miss the shot. He's fine. Blast. He's out. Well, he's, he's thinking See, about going you, back. He's Anthony, fine. you should probably... Yeah, okay. He's going to recall. He's got his team. They're kind of thinking about being in the area right now. Poppy will recall. Took about an aggressive attitude, but at the very least, he's he's not going to die. They really are looking for triops. Yeah, and they probably shouldn't be. Okay, we've got Vision on Mousehar, but it looks like the rest of the team for Mythic have gone back into the mid lane. They want to get some good use out of this Baron buff, so they're straight on towards the siege here. Merlin is going to have to beat a hasty retreat, but it looks like at least the Mousehar will be able to do so. This uh, tier three turn in the mid lane though cannot retreat. That will get oh, taken no. down. He's gonna get pulled back in by a hook also, and he is gonna also be completely unable to do any retreating. As Merlin is thinking about doing another grasp. I don't yeah. know if you got enough damage though, Mazar. Is it enough? It's not. It's not even close. It wasn't even close. Triops just dunks him. That is ten and zero for the Jace. What an incredible game for the top laner of Mythic Creation. And we're looking for another inhibitor. It is the top lane now under siege. The uh, Ziggs Satchel not quite going to get the execute on that turret, but it will not matter as the structure will still be destroyed. Jace is pushing in the bottom lane as well. It's a full court press for Mythic Creation. They are closing in on all sides right now. William and Mary, the walls are getting closer and closer. The Karth is going to get hooked in, going to get taken down. And now it's only the three-man oh. defense that can be attempted for William and Mary all three inhibitors are destroyed. The Nexus turrets are falling, and we will be going Merlin, straight no. <laughs> into that game number three. Merlin can do nothing. 30 to 5 on the score. 30 to 1 to 5. 31 oh, to 6. Uh, 32 to. Oh my goodness. Um, there are some this numbers going on the scoreboard, up. but ultimately, they don't really matter because Mythic Creation have taken game number two. Yeah, they were just kills to try and and bump up the scores from each of the members. But at the end of the day, the story was kind of written like 10 minutes ago because they were so far ahead by 15 minutes that it, unless you commit a big, crazy, super amazing blunder, the game should have still been won by the side of... of um, I'm blanking. Of Mythic Creation. I don't know why I'm blanking on their name. It's, it's kind of obvious, but yeah. So really a really good game by them. Teams. Maybe that's it. Maybe you just like yeah, cast yeah, I, another mythic team recently and true. that's that's messing with your head. I don't know. There's a lot of teams like this, yep. But at the end of the day, they do they do win the second game. Great performance by Triops. Counter picked and still performed great. 
and you just have to look out for the third game, especially now because he's going to get counter pick again more li more than likely. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It is going to be triops back on the red side uh, in the game number one. Of course, did manage to pick the rumble into the poppy and was winning lane fairly decisively. But on the rumble, it was not enough to carry on the Jace. A very different story. Is he your game one POG TDS man in the top lane? I think it's really hard to argue against it. I would say triops, and yeah. then yeah. in a, in just by. Like three steps below him, hit quick. But number one, Triops. Yeah, Heathcliff did have that really nice roam early on into that top lane to get the Jace even further ahead. Was landing a lot of those rocket grabs as well. And, yeah. uh, you know, shout outs to QCL City. Also, Deathless this game on the Maokai Jungle, 1 0 and 11. Really nice performance from him. Some really great engages, some great jungle pathing. And then, of course, there was Paradox on the mid lane, Ziggs, who did actually manage to out damage. His top laner, uh, which Ziggs is pretty good at, to be fair, but it was 25k for Paradox and 23k for Triops on the Jace. But yeah, that was uh, a more one-sided game than our first one of the night. And it was Mythic Creation who were taking the dub. One to one now is the series score, and it all comes down to one more next to determine who will reign supreme in their religiosity. Incidentally, I probably should mention uh, William and Mary is is absolutely a secular college these days. Um, so I'm just leaning into it for fun. But regardless, we're going to go into that short break, guys. And we'll be back on the other side with game number three. See you soon.
All right, everyone. A quick glance to the heavens, a soft word spoken to their gods. The teams, the players charge into champion select for game three. William and Mary back onto the blue side with the creation back onto the red. Triops with the counter pick. TDS, what are you looking out for here as we move through the first phase of bands? They really just say, screw your champions from the previous game. We're taking out the the the, the Jays and the Six. Not even a doubt about it. And they also slept up the Maokai. So I think if William and Mary takes the Kai'Sa, Mythic Creation wants to try and take the Maokai here, which is an interesting plan to try and opt into. Yeah, certainly. Kai'Sa has been left open, though. William and Mary could go ahead and snatch her up on B1 once again if they would like to, as the bands have remained consistent for Mythic Creation throughout the night. Well, except for... Um, they actually did ban away the Maokai in game number one. But uh, the victor quickly taking the tree's place on that ban list and will get taken on B1, which leaves the Kai'Sa open for Mythic Creation TDS. I don't know how to feel about this. Well, one thing I do uh, or I will say about the Maokai is that he's one of the champions. I think it's the best against Kai'Sa because of the point and clicks you see that he does provide you. That being said, Kai'Sa is still really strong and it's a risky situation to try and give one of the two to stand out over the other and then the Uthir picked really niche situation to try and pick the Uthir and it's going to be fun seeing how well does it perform over here the Kog'Maw and the Renata potentially picked as well yeah the Uthir clearly a, an answer into the Maokai for City in that jungle position uh, the Kog'Maw Renata combo very interesting. The Kogma, I feel like, is a little bit susceptible to getting dove on by something like the Kaisa, but already William and Mary drafting some nice peel tools for their little void puppy. And I think precisely because they thought if they pick anything like the Melio or the Lulu to try and protect this Kogma, the Blitzwing was going to come through. So I think that's why they want Renata, so that there's the revive chance for the Kogma, as well as having the ultimate value off uh, from the Renata to try and keep the Kog'Maw from uh, as safe as possible. That being said, it's going to still be difficult early on. Blitzring hooks are going to be massive, and there is burst potential from Mythic Creation to just delete someone that gets hooked immediately. Yeah, and it was a pretty nice performance, of course, from Heathcliff in that last game on the Blitzcrank. Gonna be able to pilot it once again. Feels pretty strong in general with the Kai'Sa as well. Looking at our second ban phase here, we have the Malphite, and it looks like the Malzahar going to get removed by Mythic Creation. There's a couple of strong CC options there. Oh, top lane focus, actually. It's going to be the Malphite Olaf that gets denied. Yeah, not going to lie, I was going to be surprised if it actually ended up being the, the Malzahar getting banned away. So at the end, taking away champions that can impact a bit of the top lane, especially if Triops was to have a really good counter matchup here, taking away from anything that William and Mary can pick to deny him in an effective manner can be really good for him. Yeah, does have the rumble open still if he wants to look towards that option again. Uh, didn't get them the win, of course, but did look pretty good in isolation up there towards that top side. Likely going to be mid on R4 here. Could, could lock in the Rumble if they feel like it's high enough priority and, and Triops isn't so much worried about, you know, what could come through as a counter pick. But no, will be the mid pick. Will be the Oriana locked away for Paradox. Didn't have that Ziggs, that Artillery Mage option this time around. So back towards the Evergreen team fighting choice. Not going to be a bad choice. Does give you lane priority. Has a massive ultimate value later on and can give you a lot of Potential play around with your carries. That being said, it is a lot of AP damage that is being picked by Mythic Creation. So going to be important to notice. And also now the Garen picks okay. as well in the top lane. What do you go here as a counter for this Garen? I don't know. I mean, what is even good into Garen? What if we just got Darius? What if we got the lore matchup? I feel like Darius is pretty good into Garen, right? I'm not sure if it's good, but it would be really fun to see a Garen Darius matchup up there in the top lane. Darius would probably struggle into the Kogma though. Especially if there's a Renata and a Maokai there to peel for him. Uh wait. Kaisa's get uh hmm. Maybe it's Jax and they misclicked. Hmm. They're not saying anything, actually. 
Um, I think it has to be Kaisa top. Or Kaisa Yana top. top lane and Kaisa mid. I mean, Udyr has to go jungle. Udyr is the only one who can jungle. Yeah. That's why I think it's either Kai. It could be Oriana top or Kaisa mid, but it, I do think also it could be Kaisa top, as well. It's just weird, or maybe it's Jinx top. <laughs> I feel like it's it's got to be Kaisa. Top. It has to be Kaisa top, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Um, it's a. Uh... It's a, it's a, it's an interesting one that we've got here for Mythic Creation in, in Game 3. Really hard to know what to make of it. Uh, just going to have to wait for those picks to get locked in. Let's get you guys that chance to like view so you can know, as we do, where everything is going. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is uh, this is quite the curveball. I mean, this is, this is to some extent, the, the power of red side, right? The, the ability to make these last second pivots in the draft throw something in that your opponents are not ready for are not expecting um and this is you know certainly something that mythic creation seemed to have gone for in this deciding game three but do you how valuable do you feel like that is tds just in general the uh the surprise factor you know the the ability to catch your opponents off guard for the draft well surprising Teams sometimes can be really, really good to try and catch them off guard, like you're pointing out. The fact that you can make them double think what it's going to happen and how things are going to play out can be good. But the issue with this sort of overthinking sometimes, right? Trying to outthink and surprise completely the opponents that even though it's maybe a good thing to try and make them think as much as possible, if it backfires, it backfires horribly. Like, there's a reason right. why these champions are off meta. Like, the, the meta and the off meta are there for a reason. The meta is because it's consistent and you know that it can deliver. The off meta can deliver, but it's really difficult to play it out unless you're really burst on the champion. And then there's an extra step to the off meta, and that's just the crazy. If it works yeah. out, it can look massively great, but it just works out in so many determined situations that it it's not consistent enough to really call it a, a bright idea and i'm kind of scared that maybe they overthinked the situation because they saw the garen and they are saying okay with range i can win against this garen but the garen also if he gets on top of you the maokai gets on top of you you're dead like in seconds there's no outplaying that so it's really difficult to say if it's going to be worth it or not i don't think it is but yeah we'll see in the game i will say tds that uh double 80 carry comps are very meta right now usually the second ad carry is being played in mid lane not the top lane um but that is still a thing so you know there's also some front line here we have a blitzcrank we have an udir they're really good at standing in front of ad carries and trying to give them space to actually uh do their job as the jinx as you can see folks the jinx and the kaisa do appear to be getting flexed around mythic creation are not going to confirm for us where these champions are going until the very last possible seconds but um on the other side of things for william and mary they have a very cohesive protect the cogma composition plus garen so that's uh i feel like that's that's pretty straightforward how they're yeah. going to be wanting to play things out we already saw from game one that cheese is very capable of being the main carry for the squad, or the fact that Wokian is going to be on the Maokai this time around is a little bit of a different look for the jungler. Exactly. It's going to be a lot on the setup and what they can accomplish as a team, so it's going to be interesting seeing how Wokian moves around and try and set up for this Kog'Maw. One thing that I really like about the composition from William and Mary is that they got the Garen, but they paired it up with a Seraphine. So technically, you could say that you have uh, an enchanter for your Garen and an enchanter for your Kogmo, or two enchanters for each of them, which is really nice to have like the extra value for both of these champions to not be going in as raw as possible can be really good for them. And then the fact that they can scale really well with this extra support can be so massive for them, especially to try and destroy champions on the enemy team. Yeah, absolutely. I think this composition is pretty threatening for William and Mary, especially against all of these squishy carries 
on the other side. If they can get on top of that back line, it should be lights out for Mythic Creation. We'll see if Udyr uh, is going to be able to play the necessary defense and actually keep that back line safe this, if City is going to be able to uh, stand strong for the team in that front line. We do have confirmation, guys. That Kaisa is going in top for Triops. 11 and 0 last game on the Jace. This time on the very, very OP Kaisa. Looking to have another Pog worthy performance. I think it's safe to say, uh, TDS, that you probably prefer the comp of William and Mary, though. How much do you feel like their draft has advantaged them? I think it's all going to fall into what happens in the first 10 minutes with this Kaisa. If she gets scot free out of the lane, I can see the composition from uh, from Mythic Creation having way more value. But if not, I would argue William and Mary's is much more consistent and I like it a bit more. All right, then. Eyes on the early game for Mythic Creation. The Kaisa top. You know, the champion is broken, but how broken is she really? We are about to find out. See you soon for the deciding game three. Don't go anywhere. All right, everybody, back onto the rift we go. As we do see Mythic looking for a little bit of a hook here in that bush behind the dragon pit, but unfortunately for them, there was nobody standing in that bush. The defense for William & Mary is, in fact, on the top side of Summoner's Rift, as that is where they have set up their five stack. Once again, in this Blitzcrank early game, nobody is going to be getting caught out. 
nobody gets caught out of position for the level one, but I do like that at the very least, they were looking for that level one, both defensively and offensively. And that's the kind of thing that I'm just asking for, more action to start off the games. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, uh, you know, action is all relative, right, TDS? You know, the fact that they were trying is, uh, as you say, what we were looking for. That is uh, good to see from the side of Mythic Creation. But ultimately, they are going to need to have to find, uh, or rather, they will need to find success uh, with some of this early action if they do want this Kaisa top composition to succeed overall. Ideally, they really want to try and make it work as best as possible. But good early, right. good ganks could really turn that sort of Kaisak lane into something really more positive. Look at that. Like that sort of trading can be good. Then the Udir coming topside as well to try and help her out can be really, really great. And it looks like Maokai may be pathing towards spot side. Meanwhile, the Udir is pathing topside. So maybe that can be the difference very maker. True. Very, very true. If the uh, jungle differential is in the Kaisa's favor up there towards that top lane, then that can be very, very beneficial. We already see, you know, Triops playing that lane out. Just a moment ago, we saw the Kaisa playing forward very, very aggressively, laying down that harass into the Garen. Does take a turret shot there, though. It's Hail of Blades on the Kaisa top. It's a pretty standard choice on the champion just in general. Yep. It's also going to be Ignite on the Garen, so... Solo kill potential yeah. can come through at any point for Yamthony if he really wants to go in as aggressively as possible. But look at that damage. Yeah, it has to choose his moment carefully, right? Because that's the thing yep. with ranged top laners is if you if you can't get the kill when you go all in, then you take so much damage on the way out. So look at Anthony already so low towards this top side. And as you were pointing out earlier, his jungler on the opposite side of the map now, Wokian towards his bottom lane is generally where you want to be these days as the jungler and we'll be able to defend against any rogue hooks that may come through but now qcl city in position to support his kaisa top not really a dive angle here or anything it looks like this wave is actually is pushing away from the garen it seems like triops is intentionally allowing the wave to push towards him it's really setting up really nicely and thinking about yamthony one of the things that you typically want against ranged up laners, really nice way of running away from triops, is to have some sort of uh, engage potential, yeah. right? Some gap closer to try and get on top of the range top, uh, the range champion at the very least. But Garen really doesn't have that. That's going to yeah. be one of the biggest complications for the Garen, really. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, you know, he has the flash, but that is it. He has one shot, one bullet in the chamber to kill this Kai'Sa. Whenever he decides to fire it, you know, at least the Garen does have that passive health regen where uh, he can kind of play things out a little bit more patiently and, and just try and, and regen up as, as much as possible, uh, you know, in between going for these last hits on the minions. Be able to get the canyon there. Very nice for Yamthony. And now with his, top, with his jungler over there, maybe he can be a bit more aggressive in how he wants to try and clear certain things. Both his cutter crabs was, were collected by QCLCD, though. So kind of behind yeah. on the side of Wokian. Definitely the case. Udi or another champion, very, very proficient in those power <laughs> clears. Here he comes into the bottom lane. The hook will land. Mage of None getting taken down very, very low. What? The uh, handshake underneath the turret does get the Udi or down quite low as well. But City will be able to run on out of there with the Ghost. And that is going to be a kill going over as both top laners are dead. What happened? There, there was a first blood and it went to the Garen first before this fight was happening down here. And obviously we panned towards the bot side, so we didn't catch what was going on up there. But I can just assume Triops tried to go for the kill with the distance. Garen flashed on top of, her, of the Kai'Sa with a Q and Ignite. And the damage was just enough to get the kill. Kai'Sa probably traded with the last bit of uh for q or minions helping around but it's just such an equal trade up there that it's kind of difficult to say how it went down on the bot lane though really nice play really well executed and they blow everything from both champions down there in the bot lane yeah definitely feeling pretty good putting the pressure on this kogma early right not wanting to let cheese get to a point where they're scaling up into the game for free 
But now both top laners without flash. Now, who does this actually favor? Because I feel like it might favor the Kaisa. She gets a huge trade off there. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah, Seraphine in trouble in the mid lane. The shockwave oh, does come out, but Kaisa in trouble in the top lane is the just as the oh, sword will fall down from the sky, but it's not enough damage as Triops will survive. Udyr picks up the kill, and now Wolkin's only level four. He's flashing away. He will be able to escape. But that's going to be the summoner off the jungler now as well. And Mythic Creation with their Kaisa top in tow. They're looking good here at the start of game number three. There was simply not enough damage there to try and get the kill. Oh, wait, Wokin? Should be yeah, fine. He's going to get a little Ooh. bit of damage. He's got to be careful, <laughs> though. The Akathian Rain cleans up the kill underneath the turret. And it's number two for Triops. And it's important to point out, this Kaisa is building towards the 80 side of things with the Serrated Dirk and the tier already stacking. So this is not going to be the Poke Kaisa. This is going to deal damage onto this Garen and try and kill him. But crucially, really well played overall by Triops and QCL CD. And also taking advantage of the fact that Yamthony and Wokian were committing way too heavily on the obvious target that was the Kaisa. And now there was an opportunity for it to go completely wrong. But when the Kaisa is ahead, when she's this far ahead of the Garen, now we begin talking about the other side of the coin where you can actually begin carrying the game as triops because you have the damage. 700 gold is the lead for Kaisa in the top lane. Merlin going to get stunned up a little bit underneath the turret, but City actually taking the worst end of that trade. So the Seraphine was in a fairly defensive position. Oh, here comes Heatcliff. This is the Heatcliff special. The early blitz roam into the top lane. Looking for the rocket grab. He's going to find it. Killer Instinct is not available, but it is not needed as Triops had all the support that was necessary from his crank. And that is going to be now another kill over to the Kaisa top 1K. Now, 1100, it looks like, actually, is the gold lady. No. Now, Merlin is in trouble. Oh, no, Merlin. Oh, William and Mary, you're supposed to know that the Blitzcrank is there. That should have been a very easy play to avoid. But in the end, it will be both solo laners falling victim to the hand of Heathcliff. Heathcliff just went from top to mid like it was nothing and got a couple of kills for his team. Second game in a row playing the Blitzcrank and doing amazing so far. And in the top lane, in the meanwhile, because of that kill, no teleport for the Garen, two plates of gold going to Triops. Oh, he's looking for another one. He's looking for another one. He of lands course. the grab, but it's going to be every single lane successfully ganked by Heathcliff in about 90 seconds. Heathcliff is really making a big, big difference both in the both games that we've seen the Blitzring so far. Going around the map getting as much ganks as possible, killing as many people as he can and giving it to the team. And William and Mary are not sure how to react to this. Like their composition, even though I think that it was a smart way to try and build up on it, they've been giving up way too many advantages once again, like they did in the previous game. And that means that now Mythic can just play around their advantages really well and try and just to snowball out of control. The Kai's up there in the top lane wasn't punished when there was a slight opportunity for it after the first blood. And just like that, it's now completely controlling the game. And same for the Jinx, yeah. now with a lead. Yeah, the snowball is absolutely rolling down this hill for Mythic Creation. Remember, that's exactly how game number two went as well. MC, they were on the blue side last time around, but it was a very clean snowball into end of like 20. Look at that! He's back again! Of He's course. back here again! And yeah, Anthony, there's nothing he can do! He's just gonna die again! The Garen is completely helpless! Triops picks up number four, goes on a rampage. Eight to one on the scoreboard. It's already a 4K gold lead only 10 minutes in. I feel like we're misreading it. Maybe it's Heathcliff that just wants to play away from Frozen. And that's why he's never bothered. <laughs> oh, well, the Jinx is in trouble. How's the cleanse? Uh, Frozen's actually looking pretty Ooh. much fine. He's going to flash to try and create some extra distance. Now Wookiee is very, very deep. Desperately trying to get is something back. The Jinx is quite low. And Kog'Maw is chasing forward. Does manage to get the shutdown. So that is the price for sending your support on all of these roams. Wookiee is successfully able to find the punish. Yeah, it was two flashes and also, or no, actually just a flash from Newfie Cheese for the summoners from Frozen, as well as now collecting a couple of plates down there in the mid. Oh, that is so much damage, Jim. He's dead again. He's oh my god. Oh, the humanity, TDS. 
What are we watching in this top lane? Oh my, Anthony had such a fantastic start to the evening as well. Remember the yeah. game number one, four, zero, and 11, I believe it was on the poppy. Uh, but things have just gone downhill fast from there for the Wham top laner. Yeah, that's what happens when you die. <laughs> it just becomes more and more consistent and we see more trouble surging because of that. And since the lane kind of became a, an island oh after the, the junglers God. came after the soul kill, it's just impossible to try and respond to it. This is without Herald, by the way. That was five solo turret plates for the Kai'Sa top. QCL City still sitting on Shelly. The charm will come through, but Udi are not close enough to the turret to actually take any shots. And the Seraphine ultimate used for pretty much nothing. Udyr was the same level as the Seraphine at, at the moment of the play. Now she's take level nine, but at the moment that it was happening, she was the same level as the Udyr. How is that possible in, in in the current game? Like, I know you've been missing a lot of minions, but at the very least, you should be in a closing experience. Well, actually, oh, Paradox is the same, oh. so it's okay. If Paradox had Shockwave there, I think that, oh, it's actually still it, just a dead Merlin anyways, matter? as the uh, empowered Udyr Q comes through. This is going to be Frozen getting taken down again, as Wilkian has set up a bit of a tent, a bit of a campfire down here uh, in this bot side of things, but the rest of the map is just absolutely getting blown open by mythic creation they are running so, summoners rift right now look at the teleport into the bottom lane from traps as well to defend it's like it's okay frozen i got it from here it's 5k 5k of gold advantage actually 6k now before 15 minutes so you think we get towards the 10k that we were last game at 15 I think there's a very solid chance that we get there again, TDS. I feel like Mythic oh. Creation are on pace. Shockwave in the mid lane, not quite enough damage. Super Mega Death Rocket is going to connect onto the Kog'Maw. Mob. It's Renata that goes down, though, as the Rocket Grab has connected. Try Killer is sent to the other side of the fight, getting in a little bit of space between himself and Cheese. We'll get away from any return DPS. It's just that one additional kill going over to MC in the bot lane. It's going to be the extra, although Woken is still here. Maybe they won. Can't they have the flash. Flashing for the twisted advance. No <laughs> killer instant. Oh, where did he go? Wait, wasn't there a was there. guy there? I thought there was a... Was, was there a... Was there a guy there? They just I cut down at three really quickly. They laser oh. sword that three down, essentially. I didn't, oh. I didn't see that. Uh, is he really? Cliff? Maybe a little bit too far forward. No killer instinct, remember? <laughs> so uh yeah, Triops is pretty much like, yeah, I'm I was gonna base, dude. Um so Heathcliff make just getting a little bit too big for his fists there, too big for his robot britches. Has had a fantastic game so far. I think we can forgive that one little overstep. Also, to add on top of what we said earlier, Hitley has spent more time with Triops than with Frozen this game. Yeah, that's that's feeling pretty true. Any truers over there in the Twitch chat? So, uh, yeah, I mean, that's the win condition. After game uh, two as well, you know, they saw tri the performance that Triops was putting in, and Heathcliff was like, you know what? I think I'm going to go support that guy, and it's working out really, really well. He's the real carry of the team. Yeah, at least it's looking that way at the moment. This will be a dragon that does go over to William and Mary, though. They're burning it down, and the smite is true. <laughs> from Wokian and a very nice exfiltration through the bot lane as well. So the heist is complete for William and Mary. They secure oh. a neutral and the flash away from the shockwave, really, really nice as well. Good reaction from Mage of None to get away from the Orianna ultimate. And uh, that was that was pretty nice, but they really had no right to actually get that dragon, but they got it anyway. Yeah, they were Lost there first money. and they started it first and they did it first. I don't like though, Oh, wait. He's dead. I'm pretty sure Yampany is... Okay, he managed to clear the... It yep. doesn't matter. He's dead. It just doesn't matter. Kai'Sa is way too far ahead. Way too far ahead. Okay. TDS Wookie and... Oh, almost with that Bramble Smash. I think maybe if the Maokai got off that last Q, it could have been enough. But in the end, it was not He's to not be 8 AP. and 1 for Triops. That's, that is true. Yeah, but the base damage on the Q is relatively high. and It is what Maokai maxes first these days especially on the tank build, but it's not, not going to be the case. Triops not going to go down is, uh, of course, does have that one death on the scoreboard, which is significantly more than Triops had in game number two. But um, ultimately, it's it's probably going to be fine. I'm not sure if the Shockwave is is, is, bad, is good just throwing it out <laughs> and getting poked out. That's just there, a but... classic Oriana move there, right? Just uh, 
you toss out that ultimate for a little bit of poke. It's pretty much standard, standard play there for the Clockwork Lady. At the very least, commit. I would, I would have, I would say the paradox. At the very least, go aggressive and try and get the kill. Your, your team is almost 10k gold ahead. It's not the same 10k gold at 15, but it's almost 10k gold. So you can be a bit more aggressive with your decision making there. Yeah, okay. yeah, you certainly can. Um, you were not able to get set up for that last neutral as we were just, you know, discussing prior. But still, they have a whole bunch of control over Summoner's Rift right now. And uh, yeah, they should be able to play for pretty much anything that they want. It's uh, not really pushing the envelope too aggressively right now, though, TDS. So I, I, I'm with you. I like they should know on the side of Mythic Creation that they do have an absolutely redonkulous lead right now. And so they should do something with it. It looks like Shirley is going to be the target. So that is something that they can do and are yeah, doing. It's going to be good opportunity to try and collect a bit more gold. Obviously, it's not plates, a herald, so it's not going to give you that huge oomph in terms of gold value. But overall, it's not bad to get. You take it away from the enemy team. It has a bounty, so technically you don't want to give it up for them. And then also, it does make you have the opportunity for when the next dragon spawns, drop it in one lane that you want to try and crush and just try and destroy it as quickly as possible. Yeah, certainly. Some great options here. Could put it in mid lane. That would immediately destroy that tier two, assuming it can get off the charge. Uh, or if you put it in whatever lane Kais is in, I feel like that could be really threatening as well. So yeah. uh, some really nice options here for City. See what the Udyr is going to decide to do with that second Herald. Still have uh, about 90 seconds on our first Infernal Drake. We do finally have a, uh, a good soul for our last game of the night. TDS Infernal Soul on the card. Look at that damage from the Void Seekers, man. That was a couple of Ws connecting, and Yampany's and down to about uh, a little over 50% health. Yeah, oh my, oh my. God, this Kaisa They are keeping behind. This Kaisa damage, man. Yeah, this, uh, okay. Maokai with the nature's grasp. Yeah. Ooh, oh, the nice. beautiful killers. Oh, still gets clipped by the charm, actually. But look, the Seraphine health they have to just run. dissipate into nothingness. Is Yampany... Ooh! Very close on the super mega rocket of death there, but just barely. Wilkin going to be able to soak that one by himself. Oh, maybe not the best idea to stick around underneath this tier two, though, Mr. Tree. I think... He's going to have to beat a hasty retreat. And that tier two in the bottom lane is going to be forfeit. You have to imagine, although some low health bars. Oh, the flash forward. No, it's going to be cheese looking for it. Cannot quite get that last Kogma ultimate off, though. The Kaisa W, the Void Seeker, it's not enough to get anything back. They will have to sacrifice their Blitzcrank. They do get what they came for in the tier two, though, and they do get their carry Kaisa top out to safety. They really were trying to kill that Kaiser down there. And Triops almost dies. Yeah. If the Kogma gets the shutdown, that could have been a potential turnaround. Kogma with yeah. a huge amount of gold really is what you're looking forward to this game. But Triops played it out as best as he could. Escapes. Also, Heathcliff may have died, but he sacrificed his life for the greater good. That is, Triops not dying. So we're at the end of the day. Yeah, a really good attempt there, honestly, from Cheese, from Nufi Cheese, almost able to get that huge huge shutdown is now it's paradox in trouble he's gonna flash and just barely with the speed boost gets out of range from that nature's grasp and with now the dragon that second dragon that the side of of william and, and william and... come on out tds yeah. it's game three <laughs> uh, so close i was so close to getting there but well, with the dragon that they were able to steal, just quickly to close out the point, that they actually prolonged the game long enough that the soul is not going to be a big issue. Because I would imagine that Travis wants to get the the soul. Oh wait. Okay, this is a big old dog pile on top of that blitz rank. They will take him down. That was a nice shock with the one to two. Look at the killer instinct into the back line from Triops just taken over in the team fight. That's when you can do when you're playing Kaisa on 13-14, ladies and Penta? gentlemen. It's going to be the pentakill for Triops on the Kaisa top lane. And it's going to be Mythic Creation taking the two-win victory in tonight's match. That was all that the Rena that the Triops was missing tonight. 
getting that last pentakill after the last two games and just trying to destroy everyone with this Kai'Sa. Great game, great performance, great pentakill, great damage. Is it, there anything else that you can say or argue that it's great from Triops? Because he's been doing everything. Yeah, it's been looking pretty clean across the last two games. The last question that I have for Mythic Creation is, can you end game three even faster than game number two? I believe it was uh, just under 25 minutes for that last Nexus, if I recall correctly, TDS. I think it was around the timing. Okay, Anthony, hide on bush angle. He's three levels oh, down, though. Oh. And that's going to oh. be a dead Yampany once again. Blitzcrank flying in there with the Everfrost. Had the setup. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, my God. And, and there's people oh. that think that's balanced. No, I, does anybody, I don't think anybody really thinks that, do they? There's actually people out there that think that Kai'Sa is balanced. It's just that, no. that what is it called? Oh, yeah, no. Is it the back-to-back -back Pentas? Is that the back to back Wokey? Come on, Wokey. You gotta you gotta give him the chance. He's gonna give him the chance. That's gonna be the rocket it. grab. There's the back to back penta kills for Dryops. Oh my god, what did we watch in this game three TDS? Anthony is gonna come back from the fountain. Let's go back over there. Yeah, there's nothing you can do. I'm sorry. This game has long been over. Long have we waited and finally it will be Triops moving in with the rest of the squad to secure one. the Nexus. It will go down with 22 <laughs> and a half minutes. It is even faster than game number two. And what a performance from Mythic Creation tonight's absolute domination in the back half of tonight's match. Yeah, especially after the, how the first game went. Really good first game by William and Mary to how they played it out, controlled it. But the second and third game, the side of Mythic just decided we want to go in, we have to we want to have damage, control the waves, and win the lanes. And they did that perfectly and destroyed the game. The start of this game was looking a bit iffy with that first blood in the top lane, how it went and how Yamtony actually won the 1v1 against the Kaisa. But after that, Triops just completely annihilated the lane, annihilated everything, destroyed yeah, poor Yamtony up there. And even though I thought it was going to be the actually 80 Kaisa, he just went for the uh, to try and get the AD upgrade first, the Q upgrade first, to get the damage down in the lane, and then went for the AP. And I think that's a really smart adaptation because he's on a 1v1 lane against a solo uh, against a solo laner that is melee. So as long as you get as much damage as possible with your Q, he cannot do anything to you. And that's exactly what we saw consistently from, uh, from Triops out there in the top lane. Unbelievable stuff. Look at these damage charts, TD. I have not seen a damage chart like this in a minute. That is just disgusting. It's 36k for Triops on the Kaisa. Second most damage in the game was Nufi Cheese at 14 and a half, well under half of what Triops was able to put out. That is just nasty, man. Yep. <laughs> I'm also more oh, curious about goodness. how m there were multiple members below 10,000 damage. I but... mean, that's just the way things ended up playing out. QCL City and and Paradox were were both deathless, you know, but they didn't they didn't really have to even do anything. It felt like nobody on the, the side of, of the creation <laughs> had to do anything that game except for maybe Heathcliff. You know, yeah. Heathcliff was kind of popping off there, helping helping set triops up and uh, making sure the rest of the lanes were winning as well, but. I mean, that was, that was it was so one-sided. It's like Triops didn't give anybody else a chance to do anything. It really was. It just so difficult to go against how it went because of how much domination there was in the both last games, both of the last games. Unbelievable. I mean, I think it's pretty uh, one-sided. Our MVP votes once again are going to have to go yep. up to Triops, the man on the top side. Uh, it's really just nobody. I mean, Heatcliff is is a strong runner-up. It's a strong runner-up here in this in this last game. Uh, really, really nice performance on the Blitzcrank. You know, again, uh, you know, a couple of moments where he was a little bit too far forward, but ultimately I think we can just chalk that up to like him sacrificing himself for the good of the team, right? If, if somebody has to die, it should be the Blitzcrank. And uh, that's that's really what was what was happening, I think, in those instances. And 
the the early roams were so impactful from Heathcliff. I mean, it was it was two and one for triops pretty early on, but then once Heathcliff made it up there, it was very quickly you know four and one, five and one. Triops just started racking them up after that. So, yeah, I mean, strong strong runner up there, but got to give it to Triops. The back to back POGs tonight. What what a what a monster performance in that top lane. Really incredible stuff. Uh, and a really great start to the season for Mythic Creation. They're going to be really happy, you have to think, with tonight's result. You know, they lost game number one, but they gave over Kaisa in game number one. So that's that was yeah. really the main reason. You know, they, they didn't necessarily lose to William and Mary. They lost to Kaisa. That's really what 100% pick and ban and win rate tonight. Yep. Yep. 100%. As, uh, as it has been for pretty much this entire patch in every single game. At every level of play, <laughs> Kaisa nerfs <laughs> can't come soon enough, can they? It's I mean, really it's difficult to go long. against it. Yeah. yeah. It's just, I, it's just so you can't play against it right now. I'm happy we're going to... Well, technically, the, the nerfs that she's going to get, I don't think are going to be that massive, but only time will tell, really. We'll see. We'll see. If they're not, then I'm sure some more nerfs will follow. We might have to wait an inordinately long time for them. But I assume at some point Riot will figure out that um, something has gone wrong here and uh, they do need to kind of figure out That's what, what that told. was. I believe in them to eventually get there. But uh, we have gotten there tonight. We have reached the end of our show, TDS. Do you have any final thoughts, any closing remarks on tonight's match or anything uh, you're looking forward to for the rest of the season here in style? Uh, last thing I'll close out with is it was a great, a great match. It's really fun to get to see how both of these teams played tonight, and really excited for what the the rest of the season look looks out for because this is still early on. So there is opportunities for everyone oh, to yeah. try and outplay and play as well as they can. And also down there, follow us on Twitter. It's down there. Of course, of course. Good shout there, TDS. We do have our Twitter handles in the stream title. If you guys enjoyed the content tonight, if you enjoyed the cast. Please do feel free to go ahead and drop us those follows. And for William and Mary, you know, you're absolutely right as well. We are still very, very early on in the season, and they have more than enough time to bounce back from this defeat and turn things around for the rest of their season. And uh, I assume that will start with them not allowing Kaisa to go over when they're playing on blue side. That's going to be lesson number one from tonight. So uh, definitely looking forward to seeing that. More Kaisa bands come through in the future, but that is going to conclude our entertainment for this evening. So from myself, from TDS, from the entire production team at Style Esports, thank you everybody so very much for watching. We appreciate every single one of you, and we'll catch you next time for some more action. I don't have anything else in the schedule right now, but I imagine we will be getting some more streams your way sooner rather than later. We'll see you then. Thank you again for watching, and 